Hello and welcome to the first match of the Discord Community Throwdown uh, Window 3. And this is uh, going to be a pretty sweet matchup today, guys. I I'm really excited. I got Kenobi and I've got Labosco here with me. We've got a uh, Primal versus Orange Trash today. So uh, how you guys doing? What's up? What's on your brain? Doing pretty good. Um, like you said, a pretty good matchup here. Orange Trash versus Primal. It's It's a pretty... Bleak looking Sunday here in the land of Illinois. I think there's actually snow Same falling here in Kentucky. It was ugly so, day. Ugly day. And, and like I said, snow, I think still too. And my birthday's in like a few days. And this is, this is what I, uh, what I have. So it's, it's going well other than that. So the good thing is, is I get overwatch to kind of distract me from all of it. And yeah, that's always that. fun. And not only yeah. that, I get to cast with Kenobi. So that's always a good thing. <laughs> yeah. Up here in Connecticut, it's like, it can't make up its mind whether it still wants to be winter or not and like it'll be it, one day it'll be like 75 and then it'll be 45 later and it's like can you just decide like i want to know if i can wear shorts outside or not and like not get sick so but yeah we do have i'm warm inside i'm comfy now and i've got some overwatch to uh as lavasco said to distract me from the weather quote unquote that i have all right well let's uh let's say no more except for let's say a lot more but i guess let's kick into <laughs> uh this game all right you guys ready yeah, yeah yeah all right let's do this we're starting off with hollywood for map one all right so here we go kenobi into map one we're going to hollywood our teams of course orange trash and wow. primal looking at both of these teams Important game for both of them because as far as standings are concerned, they're both near the top. Primal doing a little bit better right now. Orange Trash had a tough matchup that they had to go against that ended up giving them their loss. But now they're going up against one of the other top teams. So standings-wise, this is just super important. Yeah, this is my first time watching either of these two teams, so it'll be interesting to see uh, what they're gonna do. From what I've he what I hear uh, about other Discord throwdown matches, is that this team, this uh, matchup will most likely be very close. So I'm really interested to see what these two teams are gonna and do, and what's gonna give one team the edge to win here. So looking at it right now on your screen, the red team is Orange Trash, and Primal is the and i think i just said this wrong sorry blue is orange trash primal okay. is red <laughs> so red is looking the most at, primal color <laughs> yes exactly exactly it is primal rage is what comes to mind when i think of that <laughs> we're, we're seeing them show us maybe a little bit of their hand um racer playing torbjorn we're probably not going to get and brandis on symmetra i mean not that they can't do it, but looking at the defensive side, it looks like they're pretty much set up with what they're going to do here. They're going to run a Farrakhan with a McCree as well, and then it's Moira Mercy. So a lot of healing going to be coming out for this comp. Yeah, and it's going to be interesting to see how they're going to be able to use this pharmacy effectively. This is one of her better maps is at this first point on the A right here. They don't have really have a skybox that's going to be able to hinder you. So if Incognito and uh, I, I think that's UK Lover 16, maybe, I, I'm gonna, that's what I'm going to go with. If they can just pump out a lot of good damage onto the enemy team, they don't have anything really to counter them. Yeah, that's very true. And it looks like they will go with this Doomfist for Visors. He's got the Healing Orb on him here early on as they try to get to the McCree. And McCree threw out that flashbang early from Shadow Kitten. Doesn't get anything with it, but now both teams are going to start meeting up here. Both teams with a little bit of mobility, though, as far as some of their DPS goes. Of course, with the Pharah and the Doomfist, a little bit more mobility maybe on one side, and the good flashbang from Shadow Kitten gets Visors down here early on. So that Doomfist already not being effective uh, just because of good use of the flashbang. Yeah, they're going to maybe have to start uh, changing something here as, you know, it looks like if you look at Incognito here, he's doing so much damage on this fair and he's left pretty much uncontested. Oliver and Visors didn't really have anything to do deal with the fair at that point. No hit scan, so Visors is going to switch over to that McCree, and that's a good call. Going to try and get down that fair Mercy. Lex Delicious is able to get, she's able to get very, very aggressive too as the Moira deal out some damage and maybe just build up that ultimate a little bit faster already to 76%. So you do have 
Visor switch to the McCree here from the Doomfist, so a little bit of a change there as well. They do have the Tracer too, and Oliver, as Rogue Native will get the first elimination for the offense. Racer finding Shadow Kitten, so now they take out a couple here. Out comes the Barrage, manages to get Visors, but is it enough? It's looking like it might not be. Looks like it's just the two supports left, and they're quickly wiped. Yeah, that was a great job there from the side of Team Primal. I mean, Brandis there pops the Valkyrie, and then at that point, really, the tanks just have to hit W. Rogue Native and H and H Stop just go in with their abilities and get all the kills and DMEC the Diva. And after that, the Barrage comes out, just doesn't manage to get anything. Got like one kill, but when you're a Pharah in the air like that, just standing still, you're pretty easy pickings for the enemy team. Alt economy right now, fairly even, but maybe a little bit edge to the defense right now. They do have three ultimates up. Visor's still coming back here, too, as he was just eliminated there early on. So that elimination may hurt them, at least in this next team fight, if he can't get there when the engagement starts. Yeah, and they're, they're, you're going to have to look out for the Transcendence here. It's going to be very, very big to see if they can stop this uh, this Shadow that's going to come out here from Bone Collector. But it looks like they're just trading right now. Uh, Racer's going to go down here, but he's going to get rezzed up. So it is a pretty much a win from Primal here. As the Transcendence comes out, they're going to use it offensively here, Bosco. Yes, and they're going to push forward with it. Use the Deadeye as well. Try to get somebody. Nobody there, but that's all right. It does force the team further back and allows the card to continue to move. Lexalicious does manage to get Oliver but the team's still falling around for orange trash so that card's still being moved here Ooh, the graviton surge there doesn't really pull anybody in but they do ooh, getting one it looked like maybe with the with the uh earth shatter but not that it matters there's the counter earth shatter does manage to get visors h stop goes down oh as well incognito with three so maybe a chance here for the defense but there's not enough players around to capitalize after oh, the coalescence no. as they're starting to come back for the coalescence is taken out quickly by Oliver. So still a chance here with the Mercy still up and they do get it here. So a lot of ultimates invested on both sides. They do manage to push towards that third point for Primal. Okay, Lexalicious did use that trend, uh, did use that coalescence there as Moira, and it looked like a pretty bad one, but he is going to switch over to that Zenyatta. So not too much is lost there. You just kind of stop maybe a couple of seconds off the clock being there with that coalescence but he's going to switch over to that zenyatta and he's going to try and get some damage onto these big tanks as rogue native and h stop are just doing such a great job now and they, somebody needs to start taking them down yeah her, she's going to the zen and the zen is definitely a pretty good pick here and if you can get that on the right target so they push around the corner here towards the final stretch of this last point for Primal. Deadeye used again by Visor. Doesn't find anything. Rogue Native able to take out Shadow Kitten, though. Or sorry, that was uh that was Shadow Kitten with the one who used the Deadeye. H stop managing to find two, swinging that hammer around, looking for a couple more. Manages to take out two of the the supports as well, as it looks like they might have a chance here. Shadow Kitten out to stall. As Visor is able to take out Shadow Kitten here. Just the diva left on cart. Bone Collector gets stuck into the Graviton oh, Surge along huge. with the Mercy, and that should maybe do it here. Incognito trying to get there. Lexalicious, she's able to get there just in time. Install it for a little bit longer, but still a good time bank. 318 onto the clock for Primal. Yeah, I'm not sure what Shadow Kittens was thinking when he was alting in the back there. I mean, maybe if he had gotten a couple of kills, but you're a McCree, and if they know where you're coming from, and if they're going to turn on you, that's a wasted ult, and that is some ult charge you're just feeding over to the enemy team. He did end up switching, but still, you have to question maybe a little bit that that was just maybe too much of a hero play on his part. Did the Pharah just stop working once the McCree came out? Is that was what the biggest difference was? I mean, because at first the defense looked really, really good for Orange Trash, and then it kind of just fell apart there at the end, it seemed like. Yeah, I think the thing that Shadow Kitten, I believe Shadow Kittens was the uh, person who switched to McCree, the best thing that he was doing there was putting pressure onto Pharah. You don't necessarily need to kill the Pharah Mercy every single time you're up there, but if you're putting enough pressure where they're not going to be useful and they have to think a little bit more about where they're going to be and how, how how healthy they are and if they need to be positioned a little bit more aggressively then that's really good then you're actually you're doing your job very well as this hit scan so looking at the defense that's going to come out here it looks like you're going to have a uh, pretty dive centric one it looks like or sorry looking at the uh the offense here dive centric 
as it looks like they're going to maybe have the Genji. They're going to have the Pharah again, it looks like, as well. And I think this is probably going to be a Winston from Bone Collector, so it's going to be a uh, basically a half dive. The Far Mercy, not really something you see in dive too often, but on this map especially, you can hover above that little uh, little house right there in the middle of the point and just get a lot of nice poke damage. And if you get uh, if you get a little bit low, you can just fall back and let your Mercy heal you. So it is going to be they are going to have a good uh set up here but unfortunately on the other side there is a lot of counters to a pharmacy that zen discord orb and the soldier and the widow that can headshot you through any healing that's going to be something to look out for definitely is visors looking for that early pick doesn't quite get it but will now be able to position himself in his spot to still deal some damage out on the other side the offense starting to come up, bubble put down right at the choke as they look to maybe go around to the left there, but Bone Collector's gonna jump in here, sees the target and Racer almost able to get him down, but he's eliminated quickly. Lexilicious and Oliver, or sorry, Oliver able to get Lexilicious as well, who has to quickly get Rez, so a good start here for the defense, but Shadow Kitten able to take out that Soldier 76, a little bit less pressure to go on the Pharah. Yeah, but he did get rezzed, but Brandis sacrifices herself for that rez. That's something you definitely don't want to see there, unfortunately. And it looks like Visors is going to go down too, and it looks like this might be the end. They don't have enough healing with this Zenyatta to probably hold this. Well, they do manage to take out a couple of targets here. Shadow Kitten still trying to get this in favor of their team. Dashing in gets the Soldier 76. They might be able to do this. It's just Rogue Negative left alive. The Mercy's starting to come back here, but the... Everything's in favor right now of Orange Trash, so they're going to have to try and regroup, maybe come back for one more take. We'll see if they decide to do it. Respawner's pretty even for this point. Yeah, they're going to get back onto the point here, but uh, Incognito's going to be on this fair, pretty much uncontested right now on this pharmacy, but they are letting them get back in here. H-Shop gets a nice charge there. The Transcendence is going to come out, and they might be able to actually hold this to Bosco. H-Top getting 1-2 with that Earth Shatter helping as well. Finds another one in the Mercy. Now Visor out from Oliver to seal this off, and they are going to stabilize here. They did give up two ticks, though. Oh, great job there from H-Top to get onto that point. It looked very dastardly for him in that fight. It looked like he was going to die immediately, but he stuck to his guns, and the Pharmacy from Incognito, or from, rather from Brandis and... Uh, no, 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 Incognito and UK Liver didn't get, quite get to do the damage they wanted as Visors and Oliver were doing so much poke damage to her. The one good thing here, though, oh, Visors with the good early pick, but that'll lead to the res, is they do have two ticks. So they only have to get one more, so they're going to push on here. Diving in is Bone Collector. We're quickly taken out by Rogue Native again. Brand is going to be able to res Oliver, who is taken out there by Rami Angel, so it's a fairly even fight, but Shadow Kitten falling here due to the hammer and Rogue Native coming in. Barrage Incognito only able to get one, but maybe not enough here as the rest of the team starts to fall. h Dob continuing to build back up to another one of his defensive alts in the Earth Shatter, so they have three up here. They're going to have the wall hacks too, and that can be so big, especially when you look at the fact that you have the fair on the side fair can't hide anywhere because the widow will know yeah unfortunately their uk lover and lexalicious on that zen they layered their ultimates the valkyrie and the zen alt at the same time if they had maybe you know put those at different times and coordinated that better they probably could have won that fight with all the healing they had and if you look at the alt economy right now there's two on the side of uh of primal here well there's going to be two on the side of uh orange and they do, primal does have that transcendence though for this dragon blade that's going to come out of shadow kid and that's the thing to pay attention to but oh, it doesn't no. matter shadow kitten gets eliminated early on in the the fight see if they have the res available for it or not but it doesn't matter the rest of their team is falling to the They're wayside right out. now Let's just continuing out. to come in primal rage here used in desperation but bone collector gets hit by the shatter and they're just going to clamp the rest of this team they will have one more chance here with 15 seconds left rogue native maybe didn't need to use that graviton surge so that could hurt but they still have the trans for the blade yeah, Shadow Kid is going to have to come in here and do a huge job with this Dragon Blade, and he might not be able to even do it, as Racer does have the Transcendence, and it looks like they're just going to get onto the point as quick as they can, try their best. Racer got Shadow Kid! Getting res though by UK Lover right now, so Shadow Kitten back into the fight. It's gonna have to use that Dragon Blade here sooner or later. They got Racer! As they get Racer, like you said, still hasn't used the blade. He might be able to hold it on here. 
but he's got to use it. There's nobody left on his team alive. Hasn't popped it yet, uses it now, but Racer got rezzed, so he ends up not getting anything for this, and they fall there at the end as Primal win this map and get a 4-1 to one lead. I'm not sure why Shadow Kitten held onto his blade so much. I mean, as soon as Racer was dead, at that point I was like, oh, he's going to pop the blade here and he's going to be pretty much uncontested. I mean, if you had popped the blade there, you could have gotten the Mercy that was going to be able to res Racer there, but just he was a little bit too... Uh, I, I don't know the word. He was just a little bit too careful with his ultimate ability, and I think he should have probably used it at that case instead of waiting till it was a 1v5 at the end there. Yeah, it was unfortunate to see that that's how things go there because it looked like there was going to be a really good chance for them to to take that point. But, uh, I mean, the fact that it came to that point is also something that you have to look at as well for the side of Orange Trash. You know, that they had that one really good fight. What happened on those other fights, though, that they just seemed to not be able to have the same success? Well, a lot of the, they were trying to play dive, and a lot of the times I saw their monkey, uh, I, I, I think it was... Um... Bone Collector. Bone Collector, their monkey there, was diving in alone. And I think if you're going to play dive, you need to have someone to go with you. And a lot of the times I saw Bone Collector try and solo dive onto one of the enemy team, one of the enemy teams, whether it was Oliver or Visors on that Widow. And you can't do that in a coordinated setting because if you do that, the other team is most likely going to just uh, turn around, kill the Winston, and then you don't have any dive anymore, especially if there is no D.Va there to go with you. So I really think Bone Collector there needed to just be a little bit more patient with this dive, and the team needed to coordinate just a little bit more. And that's the good thing here, though, about Discord Throwdown. That's something that they get to work on, and it might even be something that their team you know, looks to try and yeah. improve. And, and, and actually it is when you look at Orange Trash, they say target prioritization and coordination are two of the, their biggest things that they want to work on here in the Discord throwdown. So that kind of illustrates the point that you're talking about. And, and you know, when you get to go back and look at, at how things went, that's something that you can can change. And, and not that, that Bone Collector's aggression was bad is I think one thing we need to point out as well. It's when it happened is that's important is you can't just be doing it by yourself. I think he was picking good targets when he was diving. It's just yeah. the rest of the team has to be diving with you. So either there's not enough communication or, or there was something else that the team thought was more prevalent at that point. So those are things you get to work on. And now we get to go to a map where, where dive is a little more prevalent too. So maybe we see Bone Collector stay on that monkey here as we go to Ilios next and of course we saw a lot of Farah on, on the last map well this is a very Farah heavy map yeah we might be seeing Farah here because as you mentioned the skybox is pretty much uh, unlimited on these kind of maps you can don't you don't have to really worry too much except for I believe it's lighthouse uh, no lighthouse is not that one uh, the one where the the fight is in like the little room I, uh, I forget well, what that's called ruins or, or, or um, oh, oh so, yeah, Lighthouse. You're right, Lighthouse. Yeah, Lighthouse, Lighthouse. Lighthouse is an interesting one because you uh, you just have that small room, square room. I think this is Lighthouse that I'm talking about. You have that small yes. square room on that control plane. That's really the only time where it's going to be difficult to play fair. But besides that, the rest of these maps and the rest of... Uh, the rest of that point on uh, Lighthouse, it's really easy to be a fair. I mean, you can be as far away as you want, and with the falloff damage from the Soldier and the McCree, it's going to be very difficult for them to get you. So if they do decide to play Far Mercy here, this is the map to do it. And, and Lighthouse, even though it's a map that, like you said, has that boxed-in point, it's still a pretty good thing for fair because there's a lot of openings to it, and it's not a very big box, so you can still put out a lot of damage into that area and then you and then it actually ends up being pretty favorable for when you do have rocket barrage because you can just come in i, I do think it's maybe the worst map of the three as far as Farah. although bruins can be argued as the worst just because you have Widowmaker, who's so yeah. prevalent there but still it, it's it's still a map where you can play Farah. is the thing like every map you can play Farah, and, and it's funny because i i guess they you know the the rng gods hurt us because we're going to lighthouse first yeah, so we're going to see if they do decide to pop out the Far Mercy here. Uh, so far, it looks like we're going to have another Widow battle. Looks like in Widow on Ilios, uh, oh, I mean, we might, we might not even. I mean, I just, usually when I say things, they just don't even happen. And then <laughs> we broadcaster's are actually, curse. Yeah, Broadcaster's Curse, definitely. But, I, I mean, I, I guess we are going to see Incognito and UK Lover on this uh, Far Mercy again. It worked fine for them. They're still Orange Trash, right? These didn't switch, right? It's still... Uh, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, so Orange Trash they did they did play their uh they played their pharmacy pretty well. 
Uh, they just need to watch out for the hit scan and if they have a widow and it looks like oliver is going to be on this mccree and as we know as we've seen with from pine and people on this map this is a definitely this is definitely a really good mccree map if you can frag pretty well yeah see there, there's a lot of corners for mccree to hide around to throw those flashbangs to to get just straight targets and, and just um it, for for McCree, the one thing that you know about him is he, he what? He's very immobile. So what do you need then? You need places to hide, you need places to look around, or you need a shield in front of you. Well, this map gives you plenty of places to kind of hide from damage and, and a lot of health packs too that McCree can take. So so McCree is never a bad pick. And it looks like Visors is gonna go on to the Pharah. So we'll see the Pharah v Pharah duel here with Mercies on both sides. So it's kind of anti-dive versus dive farmers he basically i mean you see lexalicious shadow kitten on that genji and lucio and then the tanks the diving tanks but it's going to be for the other side there's going to be a roadhog and a ryan and oliver on this mccree so it's going to be interesting to see how this works out i mean so far it looks like it's pretty even and it looks like they're going to start brawling on the point right now well incognito got an early shot onto visors but oh no potato doing the work on the point as the lucio helping his team get some elimination so when your Lucio's dealing damage enough where he's getting kills, that's always good for your team, and they will clean up here as Visors manages to find a few as well, dealing a lot of damage out. Yeah, Visors also already has his barrage. That's crazy. We've been in this game for, what, a minute, I think it's been? So that's pretty much insane. And Shadow Kitten here might get staggered. That'd be absolutely awful if he does. Trying to avoid it here is Shadow Kitten. Stuck in the room, gets flashbang, but able to escape just barely. Not much life left, but they have to know where he is, so they might have a chance to still get Shadow Kitten. Yeah, Shadow Kitten there, <laughs> basically on his last legs right there with the health that he had, and it looks like he's going to be able to go back onto the point. He's chasing after Oliver right now, and gets him. Now uses the Dragon Blade afterwards to try and swing this back. Visors gets incognito with the Barrage, but the rest of his team's falling on the point. Visors now just coming onto the point to try and stall, still being healed up by his Mercy, but his Mercy goes down very quick, and now the rest of the team follows. So they get up to 51%, and now they'll get the flip. And that all was because Shadow Kitten lived through that chase from the from Visors and Oliver there. He was able to get Oliver in the back line. And if you're a if you're a McCree against a Genji, you really don't want to see that as he can uh, if you don't bait that if you don't deflect that if that flashbang doesn't hit, you're pretty much dead and got the kill onto Oliver and then got the Dragon Blade to finish up the rest of the teammates and great job from him to stay alive in that. So Shadow Kitten, of course, will have to pay attention to here, but a couple of ultimates up. Sound barrier for the side of the team attacking back onto the point. Oh no, Potato will use it preemptively here to get his team there, as now they use the counter for some ultimate. Visor able to get UK Lover, and Laxalicious gets taken out as well by by the, the, uh, the Reinhardt for the team, and eventually they do take it back. Regrow the one now on the Reinhardt. Want to make sure I say the right Reinhardt now. We got a little bit of a different lineup coming out right now from Primal, too. And uh, so far, so good from them, though, as they're now up to 62%. Uh, good use of their ultimates there, and now they have two more up. But a lot of ultimates coming up on the other side for Orange Trash. Yeah, Shadow Kitten here is going to have this Dragon Blade, and as we saw before, he does a lot of... He has a really good knowledge of when to use this Dragon Blade and who the targets to go after. If he can get if he can get Oliver before this, he pretty much will be left uh, without much CC unless a God Hook comes in from Rogue Native. So let's see what he's going to be able to do with this. Coming back onto the point are both teams here for this battle. Regro, though, getting Shadow Kitten here early on. So the Dragon Blade not going to be in this fight oh. as well. Pfizer's with a good ultimate as well. Rogue Native and Regro, the two tanks, just continuing to deal the damage out and just off the edge. Goodbye to Rami Angel. Yeah, you cannot die there if you're Shadow Kitten. I'm not sure where he was exactly in that fight, but dying to a Reinhardt, that's the one of the worst fates as a Genji. And... Not being able to pop that blade was huge because after that the rest of the team was able to collapse and I mean the two tanks that had gone in I believe it was a uh, uh, Rami Angel and Bone Collector. They were fully expecting Shadow Kitten to be there with that Dragon Blade and with the Genji But he went down and they went in and they were pretty much uh, Left uh, left in the dust there the rest of the teams were able the rest of the team was able to pick them off So a little bit of an unfortunate set of circumstances from Shadow Kitten missing that Dragon Blade Missed the Dragon Blade, but still a chance here. Ruins the next map we're going to, and it looks like they're going to stay with uh, a similar comp, though Shadow Kitten this time will be on the McCree. On the other side, they are going full Slambulance. 
And this is going to be really difficult because Slambulance against Pharmacy is awful. She Incognito is going to be able to farm this uh, barrage in probably around 30 seconds. Already at 32% right now. He's going to have a field day right now with all that meat that's on the point. It's just a matter of whether the rest of the team around can also help deal in some damage to allow for that barrage to be as effective as possible. The pull in here gives Rami Angel, but able to get right back to the team. So Slambulance at least controlling the point here at the start of the fight. We're seeing uh, a little bit of a, a change, it looks like, from Orange Trash. They're actually going to go to the Junkrat, which is better really than is. the Pharah. Yeah, I guess, and, I guess and that Reaper. is true. Yeah, Reaper is good against Quad Tank. I'm not sure I would have stopped that fight because now you're just giving a lot of percent for free basically over to Primal. When you could have had Pharah at least try and get the barrage out and try and do a lot of splash damage, but you've been giving up this point basically for free and Shadow Kitten and Incognito here are going to have to be pretty huge with their damage. Well, Rami Angel going down out of the mech, but Shadow Kitten oh. getting the first elimination. But as I say that, two fall afterwards as the Slambulance pushes its way forward, so not quite enough damage getting out, and the only kind of disadvantage to switching over. Sure, you get the rip tire, but you don't. You can't shoot over the the shield as well as Junkrat. Not that you can't. It's just harder. Yeah, I, I don't know if I agree too much with this Junkrat pick. I mean, the t you, as you said, Tire is going to be a thing, and it is such a huge ultimate move, but Visor's going to be able to kill Incognito. But, I mean, at this point, you have a Zarya, and Zarya against Junkrat is going to be able to get so much energy. I believe Oliver is at a pretty high energy as of right now, so... And the Graviton's going to come out here. Transcendence used, though. That'll keep everybody up. Also had the Valkyrie used up into the air. Self-destruct by Rogue Native manages to get two. So Shadow Kitten was getting close to the Death Blossom. Not able to stay in this fight. And Visor was all, or sorry, Incognito is already out. Back now into the fight, but a little bit late. Already up to 80% right now is the Slambulance 2 for Primal as they're continuing to take out the targets that are needed. So... Like you said, maybe a little bit too much switching there by switching off the Pharah. Not that the, the Junkrat pick is bad, but it hasn't worked so far. Rami Angel going to have the self-destruct here to hopefully make a difference. Yeah, and the Chuckin is just going to try and get onto the point here, but it's not going to be enough, and that's going to be it. And, I, I mean, I, I don't want to, like, I don't, I don't want to get, like, too... I don't want to be too much on the back of Orange Trash there, but... I don't understand why you would go back and switch like in the middle of a fight, right? Because Fair is like getting ulti charge at like an exuberant rate. Like she's already at 32% and you're like five seconds into the game. To go back and give the point completely for free over to Primal to make a switch to Shadow Kittens and to Junkrat, which Junkrat's a good pick, but maybe not into a Zarya is really iffy if you're playing Junkrat, especially into Quad Tank, because uh, Zarya just, I think Oliver was at. Is above 50 war. energy for almost the entire game once they switch to Junkrat. I, I guess I'm, I'm a little surprised that maybe not that the, the Junkrat came out. I'm more surprised that it wasn't their other DPS player switching to the Junkrat and you still have the Ferret because one of the co popular things that you tend to see is the Ferret Junkrat to, to counter the quad tank. That has been super popular, and it seems to work really well because you have a lot of damage that comes out from both of them. They both will build their ults really fast, but not only that, those two focusing on the Sh Reinhardt shield, that shield's gone, and then even though you have a Zarya who's going to get some charge out of it, they can eliminate that slow-moving target so fast where it doesn't matter. So I think that's more of the shock for me is not that they made the switch yeah. to the Junkrat, but who they switched to make the... And, and to your point as well, you kind of have to fight. You have to fight out that first fight once you come out the doors, right? You can't make that switch and just give up the point. I, yeah, I think that's yeah. another. I, I mean, I would have been totally fine if like they had like completely wiped, right? And like Farah like dies using her ultimate or like not getting it, um, and then they just go back and then like, okay, now we'll change. But like when you go back, like, I don't understand why you would go back in the middle of a fight because. At that point, you're, you might as well just say, okay, well, we're going to give you the point for free, which they basically did. And then you just, you're playing from behind. They have the positioning on you. They pretty much played in their face the entire game after that. So I, I think you need to play that fight out, like you mentioned. And then if it doesn't work, then you switch. And yeah. you probably switch to, you know, uh, you switch to, as you said, Junkrat Farah. Because I think Reaper is, is good at... Uh, 
killing tanks. I don't think he's necessarily great against quad tank because there's a lot of CC in quad tank. And if like if uh, Roadhog lands a hook and there's follow up, that Reaper is pretty much gone. So definitely it's good from a distance if you have Junkrat Fair because they're not going to be able to kill you basically if you have enough healing because you're so far away and they have to be really up in your face. Yeah, you, you definitely do. I, I You have to like the fact that they made a decision as a team and they all stayed together. Yeah. Like, like I do like that. That is something that I think is, is good to point out. But even though they did that, it was maybe the wrong decision to make. But at least they're making a, a concise decision as a team. That's something to point out as well about it. But, but like you said, I think that's something where they look back at it is you've got to fight it out. Even if you lose that fight, because you're still going to build all percentage off of it as well. The 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 bigger deficiency comes in giving the amount of percentage you give on the point that more than the alt percentage that you give, right? Because yeah. you'll still build some alt percentage even if that's a, a, a snowball fight for them. You still build something out of it. Just going back, you, you really don't build any alt percentage. Yeah, and you make them work for it too. Like that's the other thing is you don't give it to them. For, like they they came back. They it was weird watching it because I was I was saying like Fair is gonna build alt like at a huge rate. It's gonna be like she's gonna get barrage in like the first thirty seconds, and then no one was dying or taking damage on the side of Primal. And I look and they're moving back. And at that point, when they come back with, with the switches they had already made, that's twenty percent off the clock. That's one fifth of the point that you've given to Primal basically for free. So I mean, I I like that. Like you said, it's great that they made the switch. Like as a team, they they figured out what they wanted to counter and like what was going to be good and what we wanted to play into a quad tank. But I think you just need to stick to your guns at first, and then if it doesn't work, then you go back and change. Yes, I I agree with you on that one. But but again, that's the nice thing too about yep. uh, Discord Throwdown. That's a decision that they made that they can see. You know what? Let's not do that again next time. <laughs> next time we're in this situation, let's do this. Yeah, it's good. To, it's good that the teams are, especially like when they watch the VODs, they'll be able to see like, oh yeah, we probably should have done this. And it's all about, you know, getting better as a team. And I think they said Orange Trash, I think they said uh, Orange Trash wants to work on communication. So that's another thing that they can, you know, chalk up as something we need to work on and get a little bit better on. Yes, it definitely is. You, you, uh, there's a lot that they can do though for Orange Trash that 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 they get to, to, that they can say that has been better. I, I think the biggest thing for them still is target prioritization, which is something we saw as far as them uh, combining with their Winston on when he was diving. When I think of, uh, of of Hollywood, but our next map is going to be Junkertown after these teams finish making their switches. Looks like we're almost there. So this is another map that throws kind of a wrench into how things can go. You can maybe see a little bit more Farah. I don't know if you will, you might not, but Junkertown is definitely a kind of a wild and crazy map that we get to see next. Yeah, so it's interesting because we see we, we see a lot of different variations of comp on this map. And there's, I mean, when I say variations, I mean, there's like two comps, right? <laughs> there's. <laughs> There's there's the, like the widow play with like the Roadhog Arissa and Junkrat that we see Houston play and Houston like when they played this map, I think it, Houston has like a free win because the way they use Junkrat and the way they use Widow is just so good that they pretty much stifle anyone who walks past their point with like Linkser and Jake being on Junkrat who is just a, a menace. Um, but then you have Pirate Ship and Pirate Ship has when I think Junkertown first came out it was like the thing everyone only played right no one no one played anything except pirate ship and it was pirate ship pirate ship pirate ship and now we like to see now we're seeing a new we're seeing like more widow we're seeing more roadhog Arissa. so that, i think that's really cool to see on this map and it's such an open map it's such a widow map if there ever was one yes it, it really is uh, it's um as somebody who likes to play widow it's definitely a map that i like just because it gives you that opportunity to do so. There's there's not many maps that you really can. You know, Ilios Ruins is another one that comes to mind. That That's like a very favorable map to Widowmaker, but there's very few of them. So, so the more, watch point, right. The, so it's yeah. usually your, your, your longer maps that are the ones mm -hmm. that give you those chances. And, and there's not many of them. And, and and Widow is such a fun character when you do get to see. I mean, you, you do see Dorado as well as another one that you get to see Widowmaker as well. It's funny. So it's like basically all the maps with the payload are like the maps that you, you can potentially see Widowmaker. There's only like one map that's not a payload map, and that's, you know, 
the, the map we just saw in Ruins. Like, it's really the only one that's not yeah. Payload-esque in some way, whether it's hybrid or not, that you see Widowmaker, so... Yeah, because because Widow likes those, you know, long sight lines, and in those Payload maps, you usually have that, you know, you have those areas where you can just aim down your sights and find up some, find some good lines of sight to get those picks on the the enemy team, so Widow, I mean, especially in Junkertown, like, point A is so open, and there's really not much to hide behind, so Widow on this map, as we've seen, like, in Overwatch League and other competitive plays, just such a great pick on this map. Yeah, and I think we're getting close for both teams to be ready, but before we get there, uh, we're seeing a bit of a change to Orange Trash's roster. Now, the one thing to point out for Orange Trash is they do have a very large roster, so they like to rotate a lot of players in, but it can give a very different look, especially in this Orange and Snowflyer. Uh, Shadow Kitten's still out there, but Vix, Lafette, Flame, like th these are all players that are going to change the look of the team. Brett Chan as well. So, so you're getting basically almost a completely different team is what you're going to see here. And of course, they are going to be on defense. First still in the red is the side of Primal. And Oh No Potato is showing us perhaps that they are going to go with the Bastion. The Bastion. So maybe we will see Pirate Ship or Protect the President, whatever you want to call it. Uh, um, pirate ship, though, is entirely a possibility here, as you had alluded to earlier. H Dop showing us the Arisa, or, and and we'll get to see Widow maybe too. So 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 we could see, we'll we'll see what they end up going with. But they could go the Widow way with the Bastion is, is something that is entirely possible. Yeah, and ooh, if that if Oliver, I think Oliver's troll. Yeah, okay. I was gonna say Brigetta Bastion is something we haven't seen a lot yet, but I think it is one of the best things that actually because i think brigitte being another shield to bastion just being able to sit in front of him and then if anyone gets close to bastion being able to shield stun on a four second cooldown i think that's something incredible that you have with that combo and i think on something like this maybe in overwatch league we might start seeing that a little bit more you know i haven't seen if brigetta is available or not for discord throwdown there the, i didn't see anything saying she was but i also didn't see anything saying she wasn't and since yeah. we haven't yet, because I, I, I mean, when Brigetta does come, I, I mean, as you and I have seen in just some of the things we've seen earlier, uh, she's going to change a lot of things. So she isn't available right now. So unfortunately, Five, just a four, troll pick that three. makes us question things. Yeah. But we will have the Widowmaker and the Bastion. So we do get to see a pretty interesting comp come out from the side of Primal. Yeah, so this is just pirate ship all the way through here. Taking the Roadhog instead of the Reinhardt here and Oliver. They're going to actually run double sniper. Visors and Oliver on these hit, hit scan uh, snipers here. And Visors already gotten two picks. Miss Orange goes down. And this is probably going to be a snowball here. I don't see any way that. Oh, got Racer, but I really don't see any way that they're going to be able to stop this dash here. Vix managing to get Racer Snowflare oh my with God. the charge as well. So the defense here with the chances as Vix is able to get Ono oh Potato as well. So the Bastion is gone. Visor's really the only one left. So they're going to stall out here. I mean, they do maybe have a chance to get back quickly, but there's still numbers on the cart here for the defense in Orange Trash. Yeah, Vix there doing his best Jay Jonak impression right there in the back line. No one really targeted him, and he was able to get a couple of good right clicks onto targets, and that's going to force Primal here to switch completely over from that Bastion strategy. Look for a little bit more of a dive here as Visors... I think Visors falls off the map there, and that's going to be... that's They're not going to be able to go at all without him. Kind of just sitting here waiting near the where the card is. Racer trying to just not get caught out. Steam has to jump down to make sure he stays alive, but Laflame ends up falling in case of it though anyways. Shadow Kitten able to get Racer eventually as well. So this is gonna be another failed push here from Primal. A little bit of a disastrous start for them. Yeah, and they're gonna get the res onto Racer, and if Racer can land a couple of good hooks or good shots here, they might be able to kill. The flame is out, gonna get caught out right here before the Valkyrie goes out, so that's awful for them. Shadow Kitten with the Dragon Blade, able to get Visors in the back line, now coming towards the rest of the team. Doesn't get anybody else, but still is forcing the team to have to pay attention to him. So that will stall them a little bit longer. Still two minutes left to go. Transcendence out here to keep the front line alive here by Vex as Snowfire goes swinging in with that hammer, now charging back towards his own team. Manages to pin h Stop, but is able to be kept alive, and now we'll use the Primal to get all that health right back. So 
a pretty crazy fight going on here. Self-destruct by Bread Chan, and now the defense may be a chance to stabilize out here if they can finish out these last couple of targets. A Deadeye doesn't get anything for the flame, but his team still doing what's needed here, eliminating targets, and they do stabilize defensively. And a minute 30 now left to go here for the offense. Vix here is absolutely playing out of his mind right now. His Shadow Kitten is going to get caught there. That might be bad. But Vix there with that transcendence to stall at the end there. To keeping Sneaky Fire alive and the tanks alive. The front line, as you mentioned, really good job by him. And it looks like they might be able to hold a little bit longer as they're getting the picks, Lobosco. Yeah, they, they used the Earth Shatter there. Got another target. But now they're starting to lose some players. But a good res by Miss Orange. She's able to get Flame back into the fight as he's able to stay in that high ground area now if they can get a couple of the other players out as well shadow kittens back into this fight to deal some damage oh but it gets pulled in racer with the big hook was so close to the alt as well need a big self-destruct here from bed bread chan perhaps Oh, good stick, though, by Oliver is going to keep this going. Snowfire with a good pin, but it might not be enough. Just the two tanks that are left alive. Valkyrie to keep everybody up, and now it's just Bread Chan here to try and stall as long as possible. Yeah, Bread Chan here doesn't have the self-destruct, so she's going to go down really quickly, unfortunately. And they might try to go in one last time here, but they don't have any ultimates, and it looks like they might actually just give this up. Um, for Oliver is actually just fragging right now, getting so many kills on this Tracer, and Oliver there with that stick on the Laflame and the kill on the Vix pretty much pushed his team over the line right there. The only problem is, though, here, Kenobi, is that going into this next Streets phase, we know it can be tough at times. They can get stalled out with a very small de time bank, only two and a half left. Snowfire and Shadow Kitten able to get two eliminations here early on, so that should delay at least a little bit. It'll keep the car moving, but the team has to regroup. Oh, Racer! with some great hooks on a Shadow Kitten to able to get another one. Yeah, great hook there, and Shadow Kitten's been playing a little bit too aggro. He needs to maybe reel it back just to be a little bit careful, but the huge Shatter comes out, gets both the tanks, but there's no follow-up, Lavasco. And that's gonna lead into the other team. Visor's now getting a couple of eliminations. Oh, Deadeye to even it back up. Gets the Mercy and the the Tracer, so a chance here, perhaps, if I'm going to stall out onto the cart, but quickly taken out by Visors is the only issue. So now a very advantageous spot for the offense as they're pushing towards that final, uh, this uh, final door here to go to the to the uh, last point. Yeah, Mrs. Orange is going to Valk in here and try and stall and heal the best she can, but she's just in the skybox right now. Snowfire gets a charge onto H-Stop. He's been landing this so hard, but they need to get on the point, Lobosco. Snowfire able to finally get there and stall at least for the moment, but quickly taken out. That'll lead to the doors being taken, and now they'll have to regroup for the side of Orange Trash as they try to regroup here. They finally get back together as a team a little bit. Rest of the team starting to push through, though, right now. The Flame, though, gets Oliver, so that's a good start here for the defense as the doors open. Yeah, and Shadow Kitten here does have this Dragon Blade whenever he needs it, so he needs to be very careful to not go down, as we've seen Genji's go down with Dragon Blades before, and it'd be incredibly detrimental to the team, so he's going to have to be very careful with himself. Well, self-destruct thrown in here, and Bread Chan gets two! A good start here for the defense as they now push in. Brandis able to get Ono oh Potato right back up, but at the cost of Brandis's life, so Bread Chan, another elimination after the self-destruct. H-Stop just trying to deal the damage out with the Tesla Cannon, but H-Stop's eventually going to fall here as now the stabilization for the defense happens We're here right at the doors, and this can be such a tough place to try and push back in for the offense. Yeah, this is going to be very difficult, especially if you look on the side of Orange Trash and the ultimates that they have. They have the, they have both support ults to their name. Vix has this transcendence, and Miss Orange has that mercy ability. But Visor's here. If he hits a huge EMP, it could spell doom, and it does. He hits the he hits the EMP. Everyone's dead. Everyone's hacked, Kubasco. Everyone's hacked, and a sound barrier to keep everybody up through any damage that's going to come through. Shadow Kitten now using the Dragon Blade here, not getting anybody, but he's doing damage and allowing his team to follow up and get the elimination that are needed so the offense even after a good EMP not going to be able to get the limbs laid and he's able to wait it out it actually ends up benefiting Shadow Kitten because can't use it during a hack right and that allows for the sound barrier to just go away yeah definitely great job there uh, from that EMP I mean it was such a it was such a clutch EMP just the follow-up was not there and they weren't able to push all the way the kill started coming out for the other team uh, for the side of Pri uh, for the side of orange trash rather and Shadowkit in here has this dragon blade again and uses it here 
almost immediately gets one and then gets taken out, but got Oliver. So one of the DPS already down and out of the fight, not going to get rezzed here either because there's no res to be had as they have switched off of the Mercy that they had earlier. Keeping everybody up. Now Fix going to use the Transcendence. Keep the rest of the defense up. Using the Deadeye here. Doesn't get anything for this Laflame, but did a lot of damage at least to the shield of H-Dop. Missing there with the uh, sorry with the Earth Shatter with Snowfire. And then, oh! The Earth Shatter by H-Dop doesn't even get used because he gets a lift beforehand. Self-Destruct gets Brandis, but the offense still going to be moving this card as they still are getting the follow-up kills. Brenchan got two with the, the Self-Destruct of their own. And now just getting around towards this final quarter, but they are in overtime here for Primal. Not everybody back yet either. They will be able to get back a little bit quicker because of those stairs. Snowfire charging in quickly. Misses everything though. The Flame able to take out Racer, Visors though, eliminating the Reinhardt, but a good res coming in, able to get into the back line was Miss Orange, and she stays alive for a moment, but then they, they get out by Visors. Laflame from behind gets one with the Deadeye. Oliver able to get Shadow Curtain, but no one on the cart here, and they will be stopped short of that final point. So Orange Trash with a chance to win the map outright. Yeah, I mean, that was a that was a brawl there at the end there. It looked like everything was happening. All the ults were coming out at the end there. And it looked like they might be able to get it through on the side of Primal. But Orange Trash there did a great job of being able to stop it. And I think Orange Trash, right? I'm not... Orange Trash right. on defense? Yes, right, yes. Okay, okay. <laughs> I, I'm always, like, worried that the, the names are changed, like, on these types of maps. So... Uh, but, yeah, great job on Orange Trash's part to just, you know, keep it cool head and understand that you're going to have the ultimates and the uh, picks that you need to keep that point down and snowfire they're getting a double kill with the earth shatter you don't see that too often uh just with the raw earth shatter kill but i mean great job there and if you are if, if you're primal there or if you're orange trash there you take it you take that right there i mean you don't have to finish the map you stop them at two it is very close but if you if you are able to roll this as well as you know as well as we sometimes see this map being rolled you'll be totally fine and one thing to point out here too for the the side of Orange Trash, this is more of their their like main like their starting roster when you look at it. Uh, Vix, Miss Orange, Snowfire, Breadchan, Forbidden, and La Flame are what they have listed as their their starters. So so as far as most of these players, that's what they are. Miss Orange, I think though, is somebody that we tend to see her play a lot more too in like a starting role for them is what we've seen so so this is more of a, what a starting lineup looks for them more so than what we, what we saw earlier not to say that those players were worse or anything but just a, a, a portion of their roster that plays more together is what we're seeing right now and i think you are seeing some of that effect come into play here on junker town yeah so i haven't seen orange trash before but this as you mentioned this seems like the the, the best iteration rather i would guess i would say of this team, kind of like their starters, which is that what you were the saying? most cohesive, they're, right? Yeah, the yeah. most cohesive, right? So they're gonna run, they're gonna run full pirate ship with the Torb too, and this is gonna be very difficult for the side of Team. Oh well, the Trigger's down there, but this should be pretty difficult actually for the side of Team Primal here. There's a lot of damage that's gonna be coming here, and they drop down, and they're just gonna try and run at it right now. And Shadow Kit not able to get she that up, and they already Shadow have Shatter. Eight stop. Getting multiple with it, the rest of his team following up in that pirate ship sunk so quick. H Top himself said what? Because he couldn't believe how quick he got it. We're 20 seconds into the game, Labosco, and he has a shatter. <laughs> what is this actual map? It's going to force everyone to switch off, and they're going to go back to what they think. I usually don't like running Torb with that uh, pirate ship, is because it's very easy to kill that Torb turret, especially with Junk Heart and Junk Rat and Reinhardt. But man. What a play there from h -top. 20 second shatter, absolutely unbelievable. So they do now go with the Genji in there for the offense along with the Widowmaker here. So a little bit of a different look. Already with a tire two, his visors able to get Shadow Kitten. So very difficult start to Orange Trash's push here as they're being forced back into their spawn doors. Yeah, this is uh, this is not looking good for them, Labosco. I mean, at this point, you put all of your all of the eggs in the basket of the pirate ship, and the pirate ship had no pirate ship had no sails and sunk pretty easily. And now you're getting spawn camp. This is awful for them. The one good thing, though, Shadow Kitten has been able to sneak out of spawn and is now behind the rest of the team. So if they can coordinate this, they can maybe get a quick dive onto a target and maybe get this back. Good block by Snowfire blocking H-Dots. 
Shadowkin can one of their own! And now oh no, Potato gets dived onto by Shadowkin, so good timing. Waiting behind patiently, nobody knew that Shadowkin was there, and now they'll get this cart moving, so... So they might have sunk the ship there early with the pirate ship, but that's okay. They've got themselves a new ship, and this time it's one where they have a, a death ball. So the death ball works where the, sh the ship couldn't. Yeah, Snowfire there saying, anything you can do, h -top, I can do better. Uh, he got both of the supports in that ultimate. It looked like uh, it looked like h -top was able to block it, but then Ono, Potato, and Brandis were both in that ultimate. And those are the two targets you need to really capitalize on if you're the side of Team Orange Trash here. And they might have be able to push this a little bit far. They need to be very careful of Shadow Kitten's ultimate. Yeah, and Vix, though, she has the chance here to cancel anything out here. Except for maybe the Rip Tire. Cole Lessons here gets one. The Rip Tire gets another. Miss Orange, she goes down here quickly. So a bunch of players down the flame using the the dead eye there. Doesn't really get a whole lot and then ends up losing his life. So this one looks like it might end up being a stop here for the push as the rest of the team starting to slowly get taken out. So a little bit of a stagger comes out here with a minute left to go. Yeah, they need to not get staggered. They need to stop the bleeding. They're going to have maybe one or two fights left in this, uh, in this map here. And I mean, they do have a good amount of ultimates to their name for if they can get a combo with Red Chan or Sh and Shadow Kittens ult. They're going to try right here. They get a five man. He's going to be good in there. Using the Dragon Blade to try and follow up. They didn't Huge. get the initial kills off of it, but it leads to a big, big Earth Shatter by Snowfire after the Graviton Surge ends. So great use of combining the Graviton Surge, the Blade, and the Earth Shatter to let them get this point, even with time starting to wind down. The Wombo combo there coming out from the side of Team Orange Trash. It looked like it was just, it looked like it wasn't going to work out after Ono Potato hit his sound barrier and was mitigating a lot of the damage. But Snowfire comes in with a huge shatter, and his Reinhardt play has been very good so far. Even after h -top, we've been talking about him so much. Snowfire has stepped up a little bit and has been doing a great job as the tire is going to come out here. Yep, Rip Tire coming out from the side of the defense, but Visors can't get anybody as LaFlame able to take it out on the Tracer. So good job on the Tracer here. So we see a couple other switches too. LaFlame now on the Tracer, so they're a little bit more dive for their for their DPS. They don't have dive tanks though. Earth Shatter used there, but it doesn't do anything because Snowfire was bubbled. So a good waste of an all gets used there because of the bubble. Snowfire dealing damage out, swinging the hammers, self-destruct up into the air. It's gonna take out Snowfire who couldn't turn around because had the entire defense on the other side of him. So Racer continuing to deal the damage. So stabilizing now will be the defense, but they had to use a bunch of ultimates. A lot of ultimates coming up back on the other side. Shadow Kitten already back to the the Dragon Blade, the Gravitons almost back up, and the other ultimate they used in the Earth Shatter is just about to come up here, or is up, sorry. Yeah, Primal, though, for themselves, has some Wombo combo possibilities, too. Oliver's going to have that Graviton, and Visor's going to have that tr Tire. And if you're in a Graviton and you hear that Tire go off, it's almost certain Doom, pretty much. Not even a not even a uh, Transcendence is going to be able to save you at that point. And here we see the Tire coming out. Tire comes out here first. Doesn't get anything. So this is a good start for the offense as Snowfire now charging in forward. Uses the Earth Shatter lock. Doesn't get anybody. And now the Graviton Surge comes in response. But a Graviton on the other side. And it looks like it's going to be better for the offense as Shadow Kitten able to get one with the blade. Slicing in. Gets another one in Brandis. So they will move this card again closer to those doors. But they're still low on time. 50 seconds left to go. There might be one more defense able here unless they get staggered out but LaFlame making sure to stay alive and not getting staggered on the offensive side either it looks like they might concede the doors. Uh, Visors is uh, trying to see if he wants to get onto this player now he is going to be able to stop it for just a little bit he's going to be able to recall and take a lot of health so Racer's going to come back to the point and they are going to be able to stall here Lobosco for just a little bit. Vix has to use the transcendence to keep everybody up Red Chain got stuck in the Earth Shatter, but doesn't matter because of the trance. Now it's a matter of who can win out on this brawl. Bread Chan and Snowfire starting off good, good block of most of the players from the oh self destruct. Visors gets taken down by the Earth Shatter by Snowfire. Now they're getting Racer out of cart. This is going to be the offense taking this eventually. Just a couple more eliminations, and they will push on to the final point. A chance here to win this map. 
Yeah, and they have they have all their ult they have the ultimate advantage too, just a little bit. If they can snowball this fast enough, Shadow Kitten is going to be able to do a lot of damage as he's already in the back here. Gets the kill on the H drop. He's a man on a mission, Lobosco. He wants this game to end for their team to win. Shadow Kitten with another one here. Just looking for another target to maybe go on to. Has the Harmony Orb on to stay healed up. Just looking at behind. Racers found him, though, and is going to go after Shadow Kitten. Shadow Kitten having to be pushed back towards the team. And that'll use a micro missiles as well. So maybe a chance here for the team to push off with the cooldowns down of the D.Va. As they're still coming around towards this final corner. 48 seconds left to go. They decided to really hold back pretty far here. And now comes out the Dragon Blade. Oh, Visors, though, with two on the the pulse then a third afterwards so shadow kit nothing with the blade the ultimate by the pulse bomb doing more damage Pfizer's absolutely the savior for his team there. Gets the flame too at the end of that. The huge 2K with the pulse bomb and then managing to get the mercy as the third. And they're going to have only one shot at this left, Lobosco. And they are going to have to probably trance into this fight. Both support outs are going to be used. Let's see what's going to happen. The one good thing for the side of Orange Trash was that they were able to all die very quickly together, so they have a chance to get back together onto this card, and Laflame finds Oliver at the start. Sound barrier doesn't get him in time. Now Snowfire finding Visor, so the he DPS missed. out of the fight. That's a good start here. Rez coming in, though, at least gets Oliver back here. Good Earth Huge. Shatter, though, gets multiple targets, and Snowfire continuing to push forward as they now just have a little bit of a ways to go, and they can win this map. Visor's coming back in desperation, but already getting damage out. What has to recall? Getting onto the cart here to stall it for a second, but the rest of the team still trying to respawn. They're not going to be able to get back in time, and winning this map will be Orange Trash. Holy crap. What a what a fight at the end there. It looked like it was going so back and forth, but Snowfire there. This Reinhardt play from Snowfire has been absolutely phenomenal. As he's going to definitely get a play of the game here. I mean, right there at the end, I believe he got a three-man shatter. Yeah, this is it right here. Gets, the, gets booped actually into the shatter. And I think it was four. There was four there. There was three on the left, and then there was one on the right. The boop. Would have only gotten the three, but the, the boop actually causes it to make it be four. So a, a, an unfortunate boop. It's funny how sometimes the boop can either be your savior or or your Achilles heel. And it was that case here. Yeah, I mean, what a what an incredible match they're coming out from Orange Trash. Way to, I mean, they, they look like a completely different team and as you mentioned this is the most cohesive unit it's definitely showing in their play i mean it looks like everything is so much more coordinated and much more the target selection is just completely on point i love what they're doing and, and, and to orange trash is credit to i want to give credit to their their two supports in in vix she did a great job and so did miss orange i think that they were both very good supports their tanks were awesome too obviously snowfire is probably the one that you have to herald here and and shadow kitten has been a enabled here by the supports and the tanks now to do a little bit more on that genji and i think that's something that's really really cool to see good credit to to la flame as well pretty good on that mccree yeah, I mean, really good play coming out there from Orange Trash, and I believe the score is now uh, two to uh, it, for map. The map, uh, the map count is uh, the map is two to one. Yeah, two to one. But I, when you add up the right, the the, yeah. the points is the part that's a little more confusing. So right now it's six points for the side of Orange Trash, and then because they were able to get a point, they actually get I believe it's two points is what they end up getting instead of only one so because three points is what you get if it's a tie so yeah so it is right now the score ends up being 10 to 6. so pretty close it, it's very very close here it's probably a win for primal regardless because i mean the, the max amount of points on the final map is four so no right. matter what it's going to end up being a or yeah six to ten so we so we were right um with the the score um so no matter what though it's going to be a win for primal because they at the very least they can get one point so <laughs> that doesn't matter but you can make it a one point difference though if you win if you're orange trash and full hold primal on hanamura so yeah. there's still a chance to at least make it close in the points and, and honestly map wins doesn't really matter as far as the standings are concerned so you close the gap on a team like Primal if 
you manage to win this map and hold them to no points. And even if they get two, it's only a two point difference. So so that's still a pretty good thing. Or three yeah. point, I think is what it ends up being. Or two. I, I Obviously I mean, math in my head is not what I'm good with. Give me a calculator and I'm great. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. I don't like math uh, too much either, but ca we're, we're all about that caster math here, uh, which <laughs> but orange trash. I mean, it, it's going to be nice for them if they can full hold. And I, I really like the way they've been playing like this, uh, this version of orange trash. I really like how they've been playing. Snowfire is just his Reinhardt play is absolutely incredible from what I've seen so far. And uh, I mean, going up against someone like H Dop, who is also seemed to be an incredible run. I mean, got got a shatter in 20 seconds on that first part of the map. So, love seeing uh, good Ryan play and having to uh, you know counter the other Ryan. And H Dop doesn't look like he's going to be on the map for this one. We're going to are going to have some changes. I want to give credit to to, to Bread Chan, who was the. Bread Chan, uh, yep. Bread Chan was the one that we saw on the off tank on the D.Va roll. Had a couple of really good ultimates, too, for Orange Trash. Have to point that out as well. I think, you know, D.Va is one of those characters where the only time you're really noticing D.Va anymore is when there's, like, really good self-destructs because, you know, they're, they're, they're still kind of a defensive thing. And, and sure, they're dealing damage out, but, but especially with the changes to micro-missiles now, which is something we haven't mentioned yet, but of course, this is a new patch that we're playing on right now. So there's been a couple of changes. Micro-missiles don't deal as much damage, so there's not as much damage being output by your D.Va players as prior, so D.Va's not as aggressive as you used to see. So that's one of the small changes that happened. There was a couple of other small changes too that have changed uh, things as well. Yeah, you your uh your boop uh just your your you know your rocket boop only does ten damage now opposed yes. to twenty five. Uh, I believe also I believe that's pr the two main changes that went that for got Diva, yeah. Her yeah for Diva for her damage. So uh pretty pretty I I like the changes. Diva is it was a little bit too good at doing everything. And, you know, she could deal damage, be to play defensive, and just had a lot of health pools. So, it's, it's I, I think it's a pretty good change. It doesn't like kill the character, right? Uh, but I think it is a good change to maybe tweak her down a little bit. I mean, Diva used to have like 400 armor, so <laughs> right. Let's not go back to that point. Right, where where she was just she could do everything at that point because she had a defend that when she had that much armor, she also had like a, I think it was what an eight second defense matrix or something. Yeah. Or something seconds whatever it was that was just super long and you could eat any ultimate ever so so yeah it's changed uh diva's changed a lot and i think that i don't think any more changes need to happen to diva i think she's in a really really good spot now where she's not too strong offensively but she still has offensive capabilities um uh, the other couple of changes may now is a little bit better so that can also maybe make things a little bit better too for her to maybe see a little bit of time like they didn't overly change may to make it where she's a must pick that that's the nice thing they're making things where characters are not must picks which is always good uh, i mean yeah you're right like uh, when they had like when like Junkrat was the thing like in must pick on every map they toned him down you know changed a lot about him and which is also good I think he's still I, I think they really need to change tire tire yes. is something that's I, I think it's a really ridiculous ability the fact that you can just uh, farm it so fast and then pretty much get a triple kill uh, by yourself or get like a team wipe by yourself it does so much damage and the fact that it's so fast it's very hard to shoot so I think that's the next thing that needs to change but as you mentioned they are doing a good job of changing these heroes so that there is a little bit more variety in the map pool instead of like in like 2017 with contenders where it was just like dive 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 and the, the things that you're also seeing you know that they could do what I would like to see for Junkrat is make his ultimate take longer and maybe shrink the AOE a little bit. Yeah. I think those are the two things that you change for Tyre and then it's perfect. Then I think it's fine. The, the the other change, though, that should be pointed out, especially because we saw some very great play from Vix, she played a phenomenal Zenyatta, is that Zenyatta now, there's a little bit of a longer charge time on the right clicks. It's, I think it was a 15% increase in time. So, so that makes a big difference as far as what you're talking about, what Zenyatta could do with that right click. So now the right click isn't as powerful as it was. It still deals the same amount of damage, but it's not quite as easy to one charge up to it, but two, uh, make it as effective as it was before. So 
I, credit to Vix to still be able to do very good on the Zenyatta, even with these recent changes. Yeah, it's gonna be. It's gonna. I don't think it'll change. Uh, I don't think it'll change Zenyatta too much. I think he's still gonna be a good damage dealer. But I think it is going to be uh, interesting to see to have them be able to not get like uh, a bunch of kills and not play like basically a second or a third DPS on your team. Uh, they're gonna have to slow down just a little bit that 15%. But I think it is a. It's a it's a good change. We'll have to see how it works with like some of the players like Jay Jonak and Unco and like these players we see uh, in Overwatch League with their Zenyatta and see how they really feel about it because they're they're really the ones that I believe shape you know what we play as Overwatch. And, and the other thing too is um, you know it doesn't change what the right click can do once it's fully charged. It just changes how you have to use it, right? Because you no longer are going to charge it up super fast, so you're a little bit more susceptible to being taken out if you're trying to charge up in like a 1v1 situation. You know, you can't just, if you see a yeah. Tracer coming and charge it up real fast and eliminate the Tracer. Tracer now has a little bit more of an ability to take out a Zen, so I, but I might be a Brigitte. Tracer player. <laughs> right, and then there's Brigitte who is going to come in and just ruin everything, so. <laughs> we'll see if she changes before she gets into competitive play, though, because that's, I think, the hope of everyone is that maybe they nerf her a little bit. I mean, we saw it, I believe, one of the games we cast. I don't think it was Discord Throwdown, but we cast a game, and we saw a team run uh, triple support, triple tank with a, with a Brigitte and no damage, and they just rolled people. Yes. So I, I'm really, I'm a little bit scared as to what Brigitte's going to bring, because I think she brings way too much i mean she has the cc she has the damage output she has the healing and her ultimate the fact that you can't get rid of that armor unless you're doing damage is pretty is 200 armor at a five percent uh damage reduction that's pretty insane i think they just need to make maybe some of the cooldowns a little bit longer you yeah. know like i, I don't Four think seconds for a right. shield bash it's ridiculous and, and and i don't you know, and she can she cancels a charge of a Reinhardt with that too. Is something that 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 is pretty crazy. So so yeah, I I, I hope they make some changes to her. But we're not going to see her here on Hanamura, which is the map we're going to now. We are going to see both these teams stay on the. Uh, actually, they are switching sides. I take that back. Primal is now in blue. Red is uh -huh. orange trash. So make sure we keep that straight. But looks like we're my post its. <laughs> Got to got to make sure you keep it straight. But um, defensively, we're seeing a very standard comp on this point. The Mercy, well, actually a little bit different as far as the supports, but Lucy, Lucio, Mercy, uh, and then you're having a Reinhardt Zarya with a Tracer and a Soldier. So a little bit different here from the side of Primal. Yeah, and it, it's kind of interesting that they're going to be running this soldier and we i think we cast it again before the boss where we talked about soldier on this uh defense on this point a here uh soldier is able to sit either on top of the house on the right or in the back left where there he's able to do a lot he has a lot of good sight lines uh down to the ground and is able to do a lot of damage uh looks like visor's trying to get up to the house but just doesn't make it uh, just yet, so he's gonna scramble around a bit, but he's gonna have to be careful for La Flame because he's gonna be out on an island a little. I think Vyjus was going for a little bit of a cheeky play there. He was gonna try and set up on that that the wood area, that like wooden wall there, and shoot from above and then go back to where Steam is. They're gonna choose to play on the point, which is similar to what you see when they play to the left. Their advisors with the Helix Rocket gets this orange. So good start here for the defense of Primal. That was all set up by Flawless's Fire Strike. It managed to get Miss Orange and the Flame both uh, hit directly, and one rocket, ro one rockets after that coming out from Visors, who managed to get Sash Shadow Kit in here, was able to take down the Mercy. And once you don't have a Mercy, that's the end of your push, and you're gonna have to reset. The one thing here is you had the Flame on the Widowmaker, but now the Flame is switched to the Junkrat. So looking for that extra damage, especially with where the team is set up, this is actually a probably really good switch because not much room to run from the spam on the point is the one thing. So Junkrat going to be in play here. Flawless though with the start on to Vix and then Visors gets the Flame really quickly as they're able to spread out a little bit. And now they're able to force back this offense once again. So not a good start here for Orange Trash. 
Yeah, not a great start. Shadow Kitten might get staggered here. He needs to probably run or uh, shoot, throw himself off the point here. You don't definitely don't want to stagger. If he can get away, that'll be huge. Which it looks like he will, but... Bread Chan, oh, Bread Chan's going to get staggered. That's awful, and that's going to be another stagger to their push, and they probably won't be able to get push again well, for a little bit. It's 5v5 now, because Shadow Kitten's able to take out Oliver, and they have to go... I think that's the go button here as there comes out the Earth Shatter. Looks like it might have gotten one. Vix able to take out uh, Cultural uh, Elo as they, they get one. And now they'll have a chance here to take this point. Rope Native, the only one left alive right now, along with Oliver, who's able to get back. Visor's still set up in a pretty good spot. Rogue Native does get Snowfire here, but the Flame with the good trap gets Oliver, as they've already got their first tick. Visor's gonna have to try and come on and stall, but it looks like Visor's just gonna try and get back with this team and not get staggered. Yeah, he needs to run really quickly. Shadow Kittens and Laflame can catch him, and if he gets staggered, they might be able to snowball really hard here, but it looks like he's just going to be able to barely live with that healing, and a lot of ultimates actually on the side of Team Primal here. Five probably about to their name, and only two for the side of Team Orange Trash, so they, for this next push, they're going to be able to do a lot of good to stop this. The only problem is, is we know how strong Riptire is. That can be the great equalizer, and it finds out a potato at third. So 6v5 here early on. Flawless gets charged into Visors, trying to use the alt there. There's the Earth Shatter, manages to get one. It allows for Visors and Oliver to clean up a lot of the rest of the team. Sound Barrier couldn't keep enough alive, but Miss Orange with a good res here, but it actually might be uh, not enough here, as it looks like this is going to be a a losing fight, but they do force out a lot of ultimates from the defense. Yeah, they forced out a good amount of ultimates. However, they didn't unfortunately get the uh, support ultimates that Shadow Kitten was probably looking for. So Shadow Kitten is going to have to contest with a lot of support ultimates if he, he decides to pull out this Dragon Blade. If Snowfire here can hit a really good ultimate though on the support to get Culturello and Ono oh Potato, then they can probably win this point really well, really easily. They push up through the middle here. Does Snowfire leading the charge for the team? Sound barrier used here by the defense. Visors are able to find Shadow Kitten here early on as well. Pulled everybody in, but didn't get anybody. And then you had the the uh, Earth Shatter used, but right into a bubble. So that doesn't really get any value either. Miss Orange with the res on the Bread Chan, but Bread Chan not really in a position to do anything, and they get wiped out again. But they still have four minutes left. Yeah, Snowfire there a little bit going for the, what I like to call the Rambo ultimate, trying to kill everyone on the enemy team, but unfortunately for him, the credits just roll and he doesn't, he's not the Sylvester Stallone we thought he would be. But uh, I would have preferred that he just kept that just in case, you know, Shadow Kittens is going to be able to do a lot of damage with his ultimate there. And it, it's just a little bit of a waste for me. I really wish he would have kept it. So it was first blood if it wasn't a green beret in it where it just ends right away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just completely over the credits roll. Well, they have another chance here, so he has a chance to uh, maybe make a good play with the rest of his team for Snowfire. Gets a swing of the hammer. He's already up to 40% for that next Earth Shatter, so doing a good job at least building that back up. And Shadow Kitten gets all of your hurt early on. Visor used, though, by Visors. He's down on the low ground. He did manage to take out two, though, one of them an important target in the Mercy. So this is maybe another fight that's over. But Snowfire going in here heavy, at least building up to another grab or another Earth Shatter. So that, at the very least, they have going for them. And now the rest of the team trying to stay alive and escape. Vix able to take out Oliver, who's hunting for those extra picks. Yeah, Oliver, they're going a little bit too ham, and I would really, I would maybe like to see uh, a, uh, a soldier come out here for the side of Team Orange Trash here. Soldier, if he can get on that high ground, can do a lot of damage, but Flame, as I say, this seems to be doing really good on this McCree, and getting, already has his high noon available to him, so if they can get a couple of picks here, he might be able to use that to snowball this point for his team, but Flawless gets a double, not even using anything, just using his Tesla cam. And that's the issue right now for them, as they had three players with the ultimates go down in this fight. So this is another fight that's going to be a waste. They're just going to let ultimates build up on the other side. They will have a full six here for their next attack, though, is the good thing, because by the time Vix gets back with the rest of the team, that transcendence will be built. So this is their chance, if any. Yeah, they're going to have to be very, very selective with what ultimates to use here, because 
Culturello can use this nano onto Flawless, which he might decide to do. But Oliver gets the pick onto Miss Orange. That's awful. They're not going to be able to get... Oh, but they get the pick onto Oliver. They might be able to... They might decide to push this in. Culturello is down as well, Labosco. So this is their chance here, especially with the Ana down. No nano boost as using the Deadeye and getting Rogue Native was the Flame, who got him out of the that before. So Transcendence to keep everybody alive. And now Shadow Kitten uses the Dragon Blade, finds the first target now. And now they're quickly building up. They've already got two ticks and their Mercy's already back in here. And they can't even get to the point. Minute 25 onto the clock. And this is how important ultimates are in Overwatch. I mean, you saw all of them come out there for the side of Team Orange Trash, and it's really difficult to deal with all six ultimates. I mean, you think you dealed one, you think you dealt with one, but then there's just more that come out. And Shadow Kitten's there doing a great job of being able to get Visors on that high ground. Decides to solo ult him. Great choice because Visors was able was going to be up there alone and able to deal out so much damage to his enemy team. So really like the ultimate usage there from the entire team of orange trash and they managed to pull that uh they managed to get that second point with one minute and 25 seconds left so now we've got the offensive push coming out next from primal and they at least did limit them to a minute 25 you know that's that's a decent time bank for hanamura because that second point can be so difficult but you know it, it's not uncommon though to see as well like a four minute time bank come out on hanamura if you can snowball that first take into a second one yeah, and it looks like they will be going with uh they will be going with the Reaper here. I, I could possibly be uh, a little bit of a troll here, but that's an interesting pick. They might be expecting quad tank coming out for the side of team oh the colors are messed up. Okay. They might be expecting they might be expecting quad tank coming out here for the side of team primal. And that's not too bad of a pick. I mean, Shadow Kitten is gonna be able to do uh a lot of good damage here on uh, on the onto the tanks, onto Flawless, and onto Rogue Native here. But I think they are expecting the quad tank, and it might not work as well. If they can get a pick on the Flawless, they won't know he's there because they probably will go underneath. So look for Shadow Kitten here to get that first pick, and if they get that first pick, they can stall pretty well. And, and this is still something they can work out, even with the composition that they're going against, just because, you know, uh, there is a little more survivability possible by Shadow Kitten with just some of the changes that have happened to Reaper, something we haven't really illustrated yet, but Reaper now, with a couple of extra changes, makes him a little bit more viable than he was before, and now he'll drop down onto the back line, looking for his first pick onto the Mercy, super close to getting the Mercy, but can't quite do it. I'll have to retreat back to his team, but now they can hold at this choke. Yeah, and they now know, though, that they are going to have the Reaper, and great job there from Cultural to not die. That would have been disastrous for his team as he would have as visors is going to go into the back line here and try and separate the team from that uh spot at the front it's just snowfire here by himself la flame gets the kill and that's going to be probably a reset there for the team of uh primal there they're gonna have to wait a little bit orange trash kited it back just enough to allow nobody to really get through because they were still able to deal spam out but look the flame was able to go back and get the elimination onto the tracer. Oh, Shadow Kitten going down. Can't get rezzed there, though. So this is maybe the chance for the team to push in for the side of Primal. And they do start to fall. Flawless charging in. Manages to pin Snowfire. Snowfire with the return one. But oh, no, Potato boops Bread Chan. And the rest of the team falling uh, to Oliver, who's dashing in and getting those kills as Genji. And then the oh, use of the no. tire. No tire gets used by the flame. So they will lose that tire for this next point. We'll see if they make any switches here for the next, for the second point. But that it looks could like. Be, yeah, yeah, sorry. That could be an absolutely well, huge waste of an ultimate there coming out from the flame. We know how good tire is. It's usually a guaranteed one or two kills there. And he uses it to try and save the point right next to everyone on the enemy team. But he wasn't just able to. And they're going to have to. Re it is a quick charge from this uh, that you can get from these grenades that he's going to be lobbing out. But it's probably one they wish that he had back. Very close to a lot of ultimates, too, for the side of the offense as well for Primal Flawless coming on to the point, going to force the battle to be there, but Snowfire, good charge in, gets Flawless out of the way, and the team follows up afterwards to get Oliver as well as the Mercy and Culturello. So a very good start here for the defense on this second point, but of course, being that it is 2CP, there's still five minutes left to go. 
Yeah, and we talked about before how difficult it's going to be to stop six ultimates. Well, on the side of Team Primal, they are going to have their six ready. Rogue Native really close to that Graviton, and they might be look to just push all the way through. Vix is most likely going to have his Transcendence, so that might be the saving grace for the side of Team Orange Trash. They will be very close to Death Blossom and Graviton Surge as well, depending on how the fight goes. Miss of the use of Visor's Pulse Bomb there. Sound Barrier, though, into the Graviton Surge. In response, using the ultimate there with Snowfire in order to hit a couple of them with the Earth Shatter. Snowfire gets taken down, though, by a great use of Flawless's Earth Shatter. And now swings away and takes out a couple of characters players as well as they will now have a chance to build up here as team they do get the team wipe will anybody be able to get back in time is the question already built up and it looks like shadow kid will just get on but quickly taken out but the rest of the team just streaming back in here trying to just stall for as long as possible they the get a graviton surge but can anyone follow up they do get two get a couple more they're going to be able to hold this defensively it looks like just have to take out visors and flawless and they do, even though there was a good stick by Visors on to Miss Orange, who was going for the res. Oh my god, Lebosco, they were so close to getting that at the end there, but Shadowkin manages to get onto the point with the healing from Miss Orange, and they just stalled barely at the last second there. All ultimates gone from the side of Team Primal, two left on the side of Team Orange Trash, and they're going to have to reset all again, but they do have four minutes, so they aren't really out of the woods yet uh, on the side of Team Orange Trash. They do have a lot to work with still. At the very least, they have two ticks, and that's the one good thing for them, Kenobi. One tick left to go, and they're going to have visors for some players to have to go on to the point, because if they don't, they'll give it up. Oh, but visors recalled right into the the Hellfire shotguns of Shadow Kitten, so a very good start here to the defense. A great job there from Shadow Kittens using those shotguns as you mentioned and this Reaper pick is seeming to work out for them so far. You usually don't see it against uh, you usually see it against things like quad tank, but it's doing a really good job here and La Flame is also being very good on this junk ride, getting a lot of splash damage and you know, they've been doing a great job. Shadow Kitten again gets visors, visors, you gotta stop taking that duel on my man. He's just gonna kill you every time. And, and vi you know, that's usually a duel that you think that the the Tracer has a, as just as good of a chance as the Reaper, but when you have the Harmony Orb too, it's super hard to try and win as a Tracer, and, and just hasn't been the case so far for Visors. And Visors now, their team's got to wait for them, and now finally back in here as Visors forces people to come to the point. They're going to go to the point, and the charge comes out from Flawless. Oliver gets the kill into the Flame, and the Shatter comes out. Misses, though. Doesn't get anyone, unfortunately. But they are getting a lot of the picks here for the side of Team Primal. Red Chan still with a lot of charge though, so maybe a chance here, but they lose. Now, they lose. Now it's just Snowfire here and a play and a higher. Snowfire just stalling as long as possible and now goes down. And now the transcendence from Vix, who came from behind and now is there with the flame. Sound barrier though to keep everybody up. Shadow Kitten back out here as well. Graviton Surge gets a punch. As back on, they just continue to stream to stall for as long as possible. Snowfire has switched over to the Diva for this stall as well. Ends up getting out of mech here, quickly taken out. And now it looks like they'll finally give this up, but they got the time bank down to 203. So it's still very close. Minute 25 to 203 as far as the time banks are concerned. So going to offense once again, will be the side of Orange Trash. They need a quick one, and they're calling for the pause here right now as well. Yeah, we're going to get a pause here. Good for us. We get to catch our breath after those uh, those last points on 2CPR are usually the ones that take your breath away there with uh, just everyone streaming onto the point. Uh, I mean, It's been a great game so far to watch from everyone. I mean, we've been seeing uh, Primal do a really good job on their attack as well as Orange Trash, and uh, I mean... Going coming from where we were at like the first uh, the first couple of games where it was really rather one sided kind of for Primal it's like now it's a more much more competitive game and I'm really happy to see that the the one thing that I think that's been impressive from from what I've seen as well is um you know we, cohesion was something we talked about and and there's just so much more there seems to be so much more team play you know probably just because it's players that are more used to playing with each other out there at the same time from the side of Orange Trash. And, and for, for Primal, it's nice to see them get tested. You know, the, this has not been easy for them as well. I mean, they do have a slight edge here, but they lost that last map. It was a very, very close map, though. And now a chance here to maybe 
outright win, but there's still a chance here for Orange Trash to make this only a two-point difference. So at the very least, we could see this game be uh, the, the difference being two points. It could be 10 to 12. That could be, end up being our final score here between these two. And 10 to 12, I mean, I, I think both teams would be happy with that. Yeah, I mean, 10 to 12, I mean, we said at the start, these two teams look like they uh, would most likely be, you know, neck and neck, and it would be a pretty even match. And 10 to 12 would probably uh, would probably reflect that on the on the scoreboard right there because these games have been close except for uh, the first couple that we saw there was a little bit of some miscommunication coming out and some things like that but besides that these games have been incredibly entertaining and i just love watching these two teams play i can't wait to see more of them in the future there's no doubt about that and, and i'm really curious to see here what happens what we see from orange trash on their next offensive attack you know, they, they had a little bit of trouble at first on that first point, and then they finally, once they got it figured out, they really took it, and they almost had a chance to snowball. And then there was the chance to snowball for the side of Primal, where they had six ultimates, and they came so close in that one fight, but there was such a good regroup that came from Orange Trash that they were able to push this down to two minutes and three seconds. I, I think that... This Hanamura, it's funny because, you know, nobody likes to CP, right? But we're seeing a great game on... A two CP map. Yeah, two CP usually is is kind of those map. I think Hanamura might be the best two CP map. I would say there, I'm trying to think of the other ones that we have. We have like uh, Volskaya. We have, we have Volskaya, which is Volskaya bad. is pretty good too. Um, we have Anubis. I don't like Anubis. Uh, uh, we also have Horizon, which is the worst of the worst. That's <laughs> that's the one. That's the one that goes in the garbage for me. Uh, I, I just think that it'd be nice to see it'd be nice to see these teams go the distance and it looks like we are going to be able to see that now. Yes, and, and, and I think that uh, we're just waiting on one player who's having maybe some issues with their game. So we will be getting jumping back over into this. So so just waiting for those or I believe it's flawless is the one we're waiting on. But until that happens, though, we can we can kind of look back at some of the things that happened there on that last one. I mean, you know, you, they were kind of in a bad spot as far as primal after they used that they had that full six and they didn't win that, but they were able to really turn it around. We do have flawless back here now. Now, I, I guess my biggest question is: is the next time that we see orange trash on defense, um. Do we – well, it looks like they're asking for a pause again. Be, pa uh, Be paused. I don't know if that's what he meant or – or. Uh, he, he well, it looks like it's fine now. So. Yeah, so, okay, it looks like we're going But anyways, what I was going to ask was what do we see as far as the defense here from – the side of primal do they change it up from their last defense which was pretty well and it looks like they are it looks like they're going with the the sombra, the sombra. and visors is a very good sombra to point out as well we've seen some really big emps come from visors yeah visors visors is going to be on this sombra it's going to be uh he was on that soldier before and i really like soldier on this map uh for point a but i mean you are going to be able to get a lot of health pack uh well, I health pack denial here for visors and gonna be able to heal your team up just a little bit. So, and especially if that EMP comes out at some point, it's gonna be good. But Shadow Kitten is gonna be on this McCree, so visors gonna have to play very careful. And as we saw last game, he might not be that great at it, unfortunately, going up against that Reaper a bunch. So they do have the McCree and the Junkrat here in Snowfire winning that Ryan v. Ryan battle to start things off. So that'll allow the team to bully on at the point. But Rogue Native finding a pick of his own. But Laflame evening things back out once again in favor of the offense. Now they just have to clear this and Laflame finding the picks needed. Pretty much just Oliver, the only one left along with one other or two other players off on Visors and Rogue Native. Visors just trying to stay alive here building up to that EMP, but nobody's going to be there for the follow-up, so he'll probably just have to save that for the next point as they do take this here, and now they string quickly towards the next point. They're trying to snowball this as well. Flawless is getting caught out. This is their chance. 
Visor's just behind though. Visor's just coming in from behind. He's gonna have that EMP. I don't think they know he's going to be there. So if he can get a huge EMP right now, six men onto all of his all of his team right here, it'll be absolutely huge. And he does. He gets the huge EMP from the Bosco. Yes, he does. And Oliver able to get one with the Dragon Blade, but the kill's still coming out for the side on offense. They're able to live through everything and eliminate everyone. And now they have a rip tire here to find anybody who's gonna come out on the Tim kill. And they have a dead eye set up. They're gonna take this with time on the clock. Visors there missed barely Snowfire with that ultimate with his EMP, and Snowfire was able to hit that huge Reinhardt shatter. Unfortunately for him, unfortunately for the side of Team Pri or Primal, rather, that just barely missed it. Missed it is a game of inches for Visor there, and Snowfire taking full advantage of the fact that he was the only one not hacked on his team. Great job there from Snowfire. Yeah, good point out too that it was the Reinhardt Earth Shatter that's the difference maker. I thought it was going to be the other Earth Shatter that makes the difference, but Flawless is just didn't quite get enough. It looked like. Regardless, though, what happens here from the defense? It looks like they're just going to play what they just played on offense, or maybe not. Shadow Kitten showing us a a Farah here, so maybe now they're expecting. Well, honestly, this could work still even with, if they do see uh, the comp that that they potentially will see here. This is going to be a very bullish comp. And, and uh, they're still making some changes, so Shadow Kitten deciding Genji the better choice. Yeah, I mean, Shadow Kitten's here. I'm glad that he switched over to this uh, Genji because this Genji has been pretty uh, pretty good so far in what we've been seeing like in the games beforehand. Uh, so I'm glad he's going to go back to somewhat of a comfort pick here. He didn't look like he was totally comfortable on that Sombra, and Sombra is a character you probably need to be a little bit more confident in your play and sometimes with this translocations he went a little bit too early uh probably worried about getting killed by that mccree but i'm liking that shadow kittens is going to be on this uh is going to be on this uh this genji rather and we're going to see full-on die from the other side. Flawless quickly jumping in here, but he's quickly swarmed and taken out. Now it's just a matter of what can the rest of the dive do. Oh. hand though, with the hook onto Oliver, will take him out. So very good start to the defense here. It's back to the drawing board for the offense. They do manage to get fixed, though. So she's out of the picture for the moment only, because, of course, there's the res still available from Miss Orange. So good job getting her counterpart up to keep this at 6v6. Yeah, and we see Shadow Kittens here on this Genji doing a good job. Uh, Brechan's gonna get that hook, but he's not going to be able to, to follow damage. He just isn't there, and they're doing a great job here on the side of Team Orange, tra Orange Trash. You know, defending very well. I mean, they ran it through their whole point last time, and they're doing a great job of milking this clock for all it's worth. Already down to a minute six here for the side of the offense. Rope Native trying to get that barrier down of Snowfire. Visor sneaking in and gets Miss Orange here. And now they'll use the sound barrier. Good pulse bomb gets Snowfire here. So this could be the chance for the offense. Just have to take out Brechan. He uses Take a Breather to stall this out a little bit longer. Fix using the Transcendence and now into the Dragon Blade. So dueling Dragon Blades here. Shadow Kitten able to get Oliver. So that Dragon Blade is down. So still just trying to hold on to this point. Committing a lot of of ultimates are both teams and guess what there's still a lot of ultimates for the defensive side here so miss orange is going to stall as long as possible and they take it out use that valkyrie but that's okay they have three ultimates for this last fight and there's only going to be about a minute left less than a minute actually than that about 50 seconds yeah unfortunately for primal they are not going to have any ultimates really to snowball this they're just going to have flawless and rogue natives ultis and those aren't the ones you want to snowball with this <gasps> oh culturello goes down misses the jump that's huge they're going to have to stop and the tire is going to come out if this is any more picks it'll be detri it'll be hugely detrimental to the team and now it's the tire but oh oliver with the dash takes Ooh. it out so rip tire doesn't find anything so that's one ultimate down but they still have whole hog and they still have earth shatter and with their where they're positioning if the whole hog comes out now this could be very disastrous if they get a good earth shatter but all oh, the pulse bump on a snow flyer makes a good start here self-destruct out forces the team back and now they're on to the point shadow kitten the flame able to get two but the offense still with a chance here they have the numbers as of right now brench hand using the whole hog finally culturello takes out another and now the offense here shatter! oh big earth shatter from fire gets the couple that are left on culturello the only one left it's taken out and i don't think anybody's gonna get back in time and winning this map and evening things up will be orange trash as they make it 10 to 12. okay i'm giving snowfire mvp for orange trash i mean this guy has been absolutely incredible on this 
uh, on this Reinhardt the entire time we've seen him. Earth Shatter after Earth Shatter being super clutch. We see another one here getting five, four, three people all the time in this Shatter. Great play from him. And I'm really impressed with how he's come on and been with Orange Trash. Great job there. So I don't know if we go to, I don't think we go to a fifth map as far as what I remember reading the rules. But right now, I want to go to a fifth map. It's a sad <laughs> thing. Yeah. It's been so, so good from both of these teams. But Kenobi, just looking at how that finishes out, like you said, it's really, really hard to not, to not uh, give that to Snowfire with that big shatter there at the end. It, it gets everybody that you needed to get. Yeah, you got the, there were three people left, and you got all three of them. So good job on, good job on his part. And, 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 you know, I thought Visor had the hero play, though, when hit that pulse bomb to take out Snowfire. Yeah. But it's it's funny how that works out, right? So you take out Snowfire there, and it ends up leading to Snowfire being the hero. So it, you give Visor's credit for a good pulse bomb, but unfortunately, they just they ended up not winning enough of those other battles before Snowfire came back to make it matter. And, and, and that's what's just unfortunate. And... Uh, you know, the 12 to 10 as far as the maps goes, I mean, I think it was a little bit closer than 12 to 10. Yeah, I think it was probably 11 to 11 would have been the uh, would have been the score that I would have given to these teams or any, you know, number of a uh, tie that we could have. I really like that we saw these two teams really duke it out at the end there. Like that we went to an overtime with this map. And uh, I'm really glad we... Uh, I'm really glad we got to see that, and you know, Snowfire, Hui on that Reinhardt, just making me making me want to go play some Reinhardt myself and get those shatters. <laughs> you know what, Reinhardt is a thankless job, but sometimes you can make it's it super. Fun, it's, I think it's the fun, like the most fun character in the game. It, it's definitely one of the funnest, especially because uh, when you can hit those shatters, when you can get those good charges, and you can really turn it. The, uh, there's nothing more fun than playing an aggressive Reinhardt. Like, playing passive Reinhardt is not fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. You press W when you're playing Reinhardt. Or exactly. That's, that's the only button that exists. There's yeah, that's no it. PSD. That and your left click. That's it. Exactly. Exactly. So, I think... We're done, because I think the... Oh, alright, let's go fifth. Nope, okay. So, so we're trying to figure out if we're going to go to a, to a fifth and final map. Regardless, though, when we look okay. at this, you know... Yeah, I don't think we're doing it. <laughs> part of them are, part of them aren't. Regardless, though, looking at how this went, because this is at least the end between the official score of this game, 12 to 10, Primal still gets the win. And, yep. and I think you have to look. Visors was definitely a crucial part in that. Uh... A couple of their other players, Oliver, their two DPS players, and then the rest of the team around changed a little bit. But, I mean, the first half, they were the dominant team, and that's why they get the win here. And deservedly so for how that went as far as the points go. Yeah, if, if, if the, I think if this team, like this uh, Orange Trash team that we saw for the last two maps was in uh, the whole time, I think we definitely see maybe Orange Trash be taking the win here. Uh, instead, you know, they lose by two points, but those two points, I mean, the way they played after was just so fun. It was, I loved watching the way, the game that we saw after. So, uh, really looking forward if I get to cast more, if I get to cast more orange trash, cause they were, uh, the, boy, Snowfire and just all them, those people, they were so fun to watch and Primal as well when they were on it too. Just both teams really good. Uh, as you, I thought you said, I think you said that they were, uh, both towards the top of the leaderboards. In right. Discord Throwdown, and it definitely showed these two teams definitely deserve their spot up there, and it was close, so really glad to see that. Yeah, so as far as the points go, so the standings as of last uh, of last Monday were On Fire was first with 32, Primal was second with 32, so now Primal getting 12 more points will at least for the moment, I'm not. I don't think On Fire has played their 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 next span of games yet, so they will they will jump up ahead because they end up getting 12. Uh, but Orange Trash getting 10 will move above Blue Rain and it will be just right behind On Fire and Primal um, as far as the standings are concerned. So so as of right now, they're, they're sitting in a good spot. There's still a lot of time left. We're going to see a lot more of Orange Trash. We're going to see a lot more of 
Primal. But we're going to see a lot more of these other teams as well on Fire Blue Rain. Of course, YB Gaming, Wawa's Bootcamp, and Looks, uh, Looks Dirt Death are, are also teams that, that we get to see more of as we go forward. But it, it, it's just been it's been an awesome thing to see so far, Kenobi. And I think, um, you know, that's what Discord Throwdown offers is, is a lot of entertaining stuff. I mean, this one was entertaining for us, I know for sure. Definitely. And uh, it's just going to stay that way. I don't think it's going to stop being that way. Yeah, I think I think these games prove that Discord Throwdown really is is, is some pretty awesome uh, awesome game Overwatch gameplay here that we've been seeing, and I really liked what we saw from both teams, and I also liked what we saw when we casted uh, On Fire and Blue Rain. So uh, I definitely definitely want to see how these teams are going to play out, what's going to happen with the standings, and because I, li I I like both these teams a lot. All right, so uh, yeah, no, we had an absolutely excellent matchup and definitely a little bit of controversy it looks like vix is ready to talk and i'm assuming flawless will most likely want to join us as well you want to get vix in here yeah yeah bit. sure all right sweet Let's oh get wait here for we're gonna interview yeah, yeah yeah oh hell yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right let's grab vix let's grab vix all right oh, hi. Vix. Well, hello uh, vix the matchup First, uh, we're feeling great, the, despite the, the fact that we wanted a fifth and Primal didn't. Well, <laughs> you know, we we hit a little bit of a weird spot in the rules. We never really thought about that necessarily. Yeah. So we had to just kind of go with what was uh, available there. But, you know, it, it really kind of adds to some drama, I think. Uh, so I mean, we're good. cheese. I'm not going to lie. We're cheese. <laughs> well, you know, I'm sorry. It's just kind of what I, was in the rules. And we'll have to. Yeah, stick with I, I will accept that. We can just come back whenever we play playoffs. That's fine. <laughs> I, I, I think the important thing here, Vix, is that your team now has proven that maybe the rules need to be examined a little bit more. So yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, we'll, I think we'll take a look and see what happens <laughs> if there's a two-two. Uh, but map the, tie. Yeah, the map thing tie. is, is like really, we we the reason the score system is the way it is is to just kind of like help illuminate when matches are a little bit closer even if there is kind of a blowout and kind of make sure the teams aren't just kind of like running away with things but we didn't exactly take this into account so uh, no well, now you have a, a case study to look at i guess exactly yeah. exactly but either way we have an, an excellent match that was awesome stuff yeah i, I want to ask actually about that vix um we saw a bit of the the the, the first half of the, the games was kind of, it seemed like maybe newer players to the team and the, and the team cohesion wasn't there. And then the second half, that's more of the starters, if I'm not mistaken, yes, right? Yes, that, that will be our starting roster that came in okay. for the last two maps, yes. Okay. Now, th now, as far as how things went for both sides, because it's kind of a tale of two different um, halves, I think, for your team. What did you like from from the first half? Because obviously it didn't go the way you guys wanted, but but you're getting players in who who need more time to play obviously and, and the only way they're going to get mm -hmm. that is by playing in so so what did you like from that side is something that i'm curious to know and then we'll get into the second half from after the that. first part i think there was a lot of uh good individual play but normally you know it's a team game so good individual play is not really gonna get you anywhere i mean incognito right. had some great barrages shadow got a lot of picks eventually you know stuff like that happens but as I said, I, I would say that the roster that ran the second half is more experienced and we're also a bit of a higher SR compared to the first half. Mm -hmm. So it's just a matter that perhaps since they tend to be, they might have not gotten as much time playing at the SR range that Primal is at. You know what, though? The only way to get better is to play better players, yeah, though. Definitely. And, and, yep. and I think that's really good on you guys to to put them in and give them that experience. I think that that is super, super important. And, and then the second half, obviously, we see the main roster come out. There's there's definitely more team cohesion at the very least, even though uh, e even though it, things don't quite go the way as far as the points. That side played super well against the team who, right now, for all intents and purposes, is in first place just based on the the standings. Yeah. So, so you guys played one of the top teams really well. What did you think of your team's performance in that second half, too? We were uh, we were on it. Like we had, uh, as I said, sometimes whenever you get cheese, you play better. So <laughs> we came in with the mentality that we were gonna turn it around. You know, hundred percent, we were gonna win those two maps and we were gonna go to a fifth. But sadly, the point system didn't allow for that. But we were set on the fact that we were going to prove that Orange Trash is here to stay. And I think you guys definitely and yeah. definitely proved that. Kenobi, uh, you got any questions? Uh, yeah. So I'm more of the uh, analysis part. So I, I, I think I saw you playing Zen, correct? Yes, the, the, I did. did. 
so with Brigitte coming into the meta soon, I know you can't play it in Discord thread on yet, mm -hmm. but what do you think about Brigitte as a hero? I know there's people saying, oh, she's just going to be another DPS pick. She's really, really good. She's maybe a little bit overtuned. What are your thoughts and how do you, how are you and Orange Trash going to be looked to utilizing her? I think right now Brigitte is kind of OP, especially her stun. Uh, as you notice, Snow is our Reinhardt main. He is picking up the Brigida a little bit. But the this thing is, is, he knows that every time he plays against the Brigida and quick play and stuff like that, the stun is always there to screw up his day. And, and as a support main, because is not the only support play that I play. It's just, I feel like I've won I wanted Overwatch to give me another hard support to play, like mm -hmm. Senyata. And right now, I think OP, uh, I think Brigida definitely does need that nerf on the stun. And I do think that she's going to enable a lot more tank play. But I think she's also going to be easily counterable because her shield is not that strong. And if you just counter her with like a Pharah, Junkrat spam, she's going to suffer the same way that Reinhardt does. So I think she's going to not, I don't think she's going to become completely meta. I think it's where you might take her in like a quad tank setup mm -hmm. instead of taking like maybe a Roadhog or something like that, I think is what would end up happening with her. We, right, we, so you're thinking like you're thinking triple tank, triple DPS is like yeah, or triple of. support, different triple support. Yeah, triple whatever. support because Brigida, honestly, the only way you get healing out of her is by doing damage. And the only way you can do that is by brawling. Yep. So she's basically a tank if there is no brawl going on. Yeah, and, and and actually that's some of what we've seen her get used in bars, triple support, triple DPS. She's scary, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, someone, who, someone who plays Tracer, I don't want to see her. Oh, I hate running. I mean, as a support myself, I don't want to have to run Brigitte, honestly, because I started out playing a lot of Ana and Zen, but I was forced to play Mercy during the Mercy meta, and I hated it. So I don't want Brigitte to become another one of these staple support picks that keep me from playing what I actually want to play. I, I like that you illustrated the fact that you want a, a higher skill uh, player as far as, or next character for um for support because i think that's the one thing when you look at moira and you look at brigida there are definitely there there's that lower skill floor yes, absolutely for, for both absolutely. of those so so it definitely would be nice to see another like you said like a zen who who has a very high skill ceiling and and, and by the way a very good zen that we saw from you today i am curious just to think of what have you thought of the changes so far since we're sort of on this sort of this meta talk the changes to to the right click for zen I mean, uh, I don't like it. I don't see a point in it. See, my thing is that they're nerfing things like D.Va and Sen because they're meta, right? But right. they're only meta at the highest level of play. Like, Sen True. only gets top three in Grandmaster. Out of, out of Grandmaster, he's not in the meta at all. And he's obviously in the Overwatch League, so I'm calling it basically the Jijonak nerf because that's <laughs> basically what it is. So I don't think, the thing that's really itching me about Overwatch right now is that they're, they're nerfing a lot of high skill require heroes and they're putting in a lot of low skill heroes like Brigida, like, you know, whenever they buff Sombra, Sombra will negate a Genji. Regardless, that Genji could have been a Grandmaster and he's completely negated because he doesn't have any abilities. Like that kind of thing, I don't like the way that Overwatch is doing it. So, but I'm a, just a player. I, I can't do anything right. more. Yeah. It, it, but it's fun to get opinions on different things like that, especially because, um, you know, the opinion's different from ev from everyone for the most part, but some things I think are, are always resounding. And uh, the one, I was a little bit happy with the D.Va ones. The, the, the Zen ones, I didn't really understand because... Yeah, that's the thing. He was, in my opinion, Zen is absolutely balanced because the level of skill that takes to play him balances it out. You don't, ran you don't land random volleys across the map. Like, it's not like a Junkrat spam or something like that. You have to aim them if you want to get a pick with them or do a lot of damage with them. So that's why I don't. I still don't understand. It's like, we'll be like, it's the same concept as Tracer. Tracer is OP, sure, okay? You can In say the, the best hands. Tracers could quote-unquote be OP, but that's because they have the skill to play her at that level. So yeah, it's the same way. So I don't see why they found a reason to nerf him. Yes, I, it, it's definitely, uh, it, it'll be interesting to see how Blizzard decides to go forward uh, because Brigida, if she doesn't get changed before coming into the competitive scene, it'll be very interesting. <laughs> but um, Vix, I, I've really enjoyed this conversation with you. I think we've gotten some really good information, not only about your team, but just about different thoughts uh, about the game. And, and I think that's the best part here about Discord Throwdown. Yeah, yeah sure. Any, any day, man. <laughs> All right. Well, sweet. We're going to switch out and we're going to talk to Flawless next. And uh, oh. Vix, thank you so much. And Thank uh, you, Vix. No problem. Talk to you soon. And thank you very much once again. Good good matches for real. All right. See you guys later. Bye. See ya. Bye. Okay. Let's drag Flawless in here.
All right, flawless. You're on the hot seat. Yep. <laughs> So first off, congrats on, on getting the win there. It's kind of a weird way to get the win because you end up being even in maps, but you guys do get the points win. So so obviously you have to be happy with that, right? What, what were your thoughts on the team's performance here tonight? I think we did really well in the first part, but we kind of started to mess up and have these same errors that we had during practices. And... We kind of had a couple problems because in our DPS area, a lot of our members started to leave and we were having some, a lot of inner turmoil in our team. So I think that really took into effect in our last two maps. You guys at least uh, were able to stabilize there for parts of those maps. Uh, as far as the, the team's concerned, looking forward, just moving forward as a team, though, is it just about resolving those different things internally and then you guys can play like we saw in those first two maps? Is, is, is that more of where the focus goes from here? Yeah, basically. Well, I mean, uh, I got to say, that was definitely our closest uh, match so far. I think we haven't had one that even ended 2-2 two -two yet. It, so it was really nice to see a couple of really closely matched teams really kind of hammer it out there. That, that was some of the best Overwatch I've seen in a while. Yeah, I really uh, enjoy so, so you said that there was some inner turmoil, but going to talk about Orange Trash in general, what uh, do you think their play changed at all from like they were using their, you know, they were using what they considered, I guess, their second team to like their first team. What do you think uh, changed in the gameplay? And did you guys try to adapt it all to how this new team was playing instead of like how you guys were playing against the first team, which looked like it was kind of uh, a little bit one-sided, I would say, or uh, at least in favor of your team. Yeah, so in the first part, they were running consistently on that Pharah, and we were like, all right, this is easy. We can shut it down with the double hit scan, and we were running that throughout, and we were kind of like on that route where we were just going to do the head scan and all that because we actually looked back at their VODs and we saw that there was a lot of Pharah. We didn't see that much of Tracer, so we try to go at that and like just kind of like attack their back line and hope that they don't have a tracer. But uh, we never knew that they had a different team with the, a tracer player. So you said, so the tracer play was really the, the thing that like stood out to you guys as being something new that you didn't expect. We didn't expect uh, a lot, uh, actually a couple other things. The uh, Genji, we were totally lost when we tried to shut down Shadowkin. He would go to our back line and he would kill off our healers and we would be thrown off by that. So I think next time we need to like focus on that Genji because we did not know how to shut him down at all. I think that's the good thing here though too is um, you know they gave you guys some different looks that you weren't expecting and gives you some other strategies that you can de try and develop it or just to know what to how to deal with them the next time you see them is that like i mean to me i feel like that's like one of the benefits here w would you say that's one of the biggest benefits of playing discord throwdown or do you think there's other benefits too i think that that's a really like big benefit because we'll be going i think around to them if they're still in for the next uh if they're in for the finals and this will really help us because we'll look back at the vods and we'll see what we did wrong and try to adapt to what they did last time mm -hmm. and try to like throw them off guard well, and of course, uh, Orange Trash being afforded that same opportunity, it should be a really interesting rematch if it comes to happen. I mean, there's a very good chance that you guys are both going to be in the finals, uh, or in the playoffs at the very least, so I'm excited to see what happens. Yep. Yeah, definitely. I, I think, um, you know, th that's one of the other things, too, as far as you guys are concerned. I, I mean, you know, playing some of the, the top teams now is uh, definitely has to be more more fun for you guys too now that you you get to go up against a little bit better competition because how, how else are you supposed to improve exactly a lot of our members actually were complaining they were like we really need a challenge and we had our first two matches kind of like a blowout so we were like all right I'm, we're hoping for a long match because i actually enjoy longer matches well, I think you definitely got a few ahead of you. You guys uh, got a couple of the more, like, uh, I guess, loose teams first, and, and now you, you've got a, a little bit of a hill to climb, so I'm interested to see how everything goes. It, it's really nice now that we're kind of in the thick of everything considering uh, Discord Throwdown. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, getting started was, uh, like, pushing a ball up a hill, but now we're, like, we've, we've got something going on, and I think it's really exciting. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much. Yep.
All right, You're welcome. Sweet. Well, uh, go ahead and go and review with the team. And uh, thank you very much once again, Flawless. And uh, all right, good thank games you for, for sure. Thank you for the match. All good right. games, man. Yeah, yeah. All right, see you guys. Later. Well, Kenobi Labosco, do you guys want to go ahead and push your guys' uh, casting uh, handles and stuff a little bit? What What do you guys got for us? Uh. I mean, you want to go first, Labasco? <laughs> sure. I mean, uh, you know, just follow me at Labasco on Twitter, and that's usually where you'll see me either tweet or retweet about whatever I'm doing. Um, we've got actually the open division is coming up, and you'll see both <laughs> Kenobi yes. and myself casting some open division here very, very soon. So be sure to, to look out for that. But of course, you'll always see us here at the Discord throwdown as well. So look yep. forward to doing more of that too. So yeah, uh, and we, we also have a couple of other. Uh... Discord community throw down uh, casters in Open Division 2, if I'm not correct. Yeah. Isn't Ham uh, doing that yes. as well? Yes, Ham is also doing it. Uh, I think that's... I think it's only us three. Is it I a, think a, No Beatdown, uh, Boulevard, or John? Perhaps? Oh, Ark. Ark oh, as well. Oh, Ark, Ark. Yeah, Ark is there too. Ah, yeah, yeah I, I, okay. I, awesome. Uh, yeah, so, but you can, uh, for me, you can find me at Twitter at KenobiCasts. Uh, my Twitter is really new. Because I didn't know I needed one when I started casting, but <laughs> Leg Day, Leg Day was like, you should get a Twitter, and I said that's probably a good idea from coming from Leg Day. So I got a Twitter now, and so yeah, at Kenobi Casts, I uh, tweet out random stuff, uh, mostly me getting sad about classes and schoolwork because it's <laughs> finals. So <laughs> good also the weather, crappy weather in New England because it can't make up its mind. So well, don't worry, it's for the same here in the uh, Ohio <laughs> Valley, I promise. Yeah. Well, it, uh, guys, thank you so much. If you got any more wrap up, uh, let's do it. Otherwise, I think we are good to go. Yeah, no, I, I think it was another great games uh, or set of games, I should say, yeah. here on the Discord throwdown. So I'm excited for that. Don't worry about your your Twitter not being, you know, <laughs> super used because, like, I've had mine since like twitter almost started in 2008 Holy so moly. and like i only have 600 followers so it's only not, six only yes. 600 right. i have 23 i think oh it's a well, start a little bit of a, a you've yeah, got to start slight... somewhere hey i have okay 36 okay all right literally cool. <laughs> no matter no matter what anyone says somebody with two followers or two thousand followers or two hundred thousand they're still relevant the same amount yeah very true <laughs> But no, it's been fun, guys, and I, I look forward to everything. And of course, PK, thanks for producing and yeah, uh, having us do this. So Thank you. Of course, it is my pleasure. We uh, love getting kids on the internet to fight against each other in Overwatch <laughs> and broadcast. It's, a, it's my greatest joy every weekend, basically. <laughs> Anyways, but uh, thanks, guys. Uh, once again, a pleasure. Great casting, great matches, and uh, we'll see you guys soon. Later. All right, sweet. Good luck, have fun, and throw down in any upcoming games.